Thank you so much, TJ. The December 1st, 2020 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. Board of Commissioners, please allow me to start with roll call. Please acknowledge your presence accordingly when I call your name in district. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell. Present. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Madam Chair, District 2 is present. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. And Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones, present. We are all present and accounted for. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners, and good morning to our citizens of Douglas County as well. Uh, this morning, we're pleased to have with us our own Communications Director, Rick Martin, here with us to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, uh, Board of Commissioners and citizens, please would you join me in reciting the pledge to the flag in unison. Uh, Rick Martin, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Chairman Jones, Board of Commissioners, staff, and guests, if we may bow our heads for the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this day as we're gathered for this virtual meeting. We pray that we can come together and listen to our leaders, our elected officials, who are here for legislative reasons. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you help us through just the difficult times we're facing in light of a pandemic and just the challenges of life. Lord, we pray that we come together in a unified manner and that you stay with our elected officials and you protect our first responders as they respond to our citizens and all who are in need. We ask for your strength and support as we deal with all challenges and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you so much, Rick, for that amazing prayer. Um, Board of Commissioners, if you would please join me in the Pledge of uh, Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America okay. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners and citizens. All right, again, thank you, Communications Director uh, Rick Martin, for leading us in the invocation this morning, and the power of prayer is definitely indisputable. Uh, clerk, do we have anyone signed up for public comment this morning? Did anyone sign up? Did anyone sign up? Uh, yes, ma'am, we have a Mr. Curry. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if he's on the call. Are you on the okay. call, Mr. Curry? Okay. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, let me just give you a few brief instructions. You'll have three minutes to address the board. And uh, when you begin speaking, if you could um, go ahead and restate your, your full name and your subject matter. And I will let you know when your time is up so you can wrap up your comments. Okay? Thank you. You can go ahead. Yes, good morning. Um, my comments today, Madam Chair, is based on we're here in the villages of Brookmont, and we had uh, previously talked to Vice Chair Robinson about our speed bumps in the community. Um, and so that was one of the uh, things that we wanted to address because we have over, over uh, 2,000 residents inside the villages of Brookmont here and over 600 homes. So uh, the county as well as the city came out and put out um, – speed signs, but it still mm -hmm. has not rectified the problem. And due to the fact that we had, we was working on this prior to COVID, it kind of got pushed back. And so now we just want to bring it back up to the, uh, to the county. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Curry. Uh, we certainly will take this matter under advisement. And I, I know our transportation director, uh, Valentin, uh, Mr. Miguel Valentin, I hope you're on the line so we could pick this back up with you. Lisa, if you could, could you get our citizens telephone number and information for us so we can uh, give them an update? Uh, Ms. Curry, this is an opportunity for you to express your opinion and, and chat with us. And we're listening. The Board of Commissioners, we have absorbed what you've said and you will hear from us, okay? We will call you so we can uh, talk to you further about the situation. Madam Chair. 
and Commissioner Robinson uh, wants to speak. Vice Chairman has, he want to chime in. It's his yeah, district. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Mr. Curry, for, for I'm the one that actually extended him an invitation, Madam Chair, to come speak before the full Board of Commissioners. The appropriateness of this particular meeting, because we're talking about the budget, um, there is a line item on today's agenda to talk about LMIG. So to that point, um, Director Valentin will take this offline, um, but Madam Chair, um, it is something that perhaps um, should have been done. It got slipped. We understand the pandemic, uh, but we'll take, we, we, I've got this. So I just want to let you know you don't have to go anything beyond that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. All right. Thank All right. Thank you, Mr. Curry, and, and thank you, Vice Chairman. So, uh, Mr. Curry, I hope we satisfied your, your concern today, and we will address it. It is not off our radar, okay? okay. Thank you, Madam thank Chair. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming in. All right, Lisa, we have anyone else uh, sign up? We did. We had some people sign up for the public hearing. So okay. I'm not there's someone out there that um, just needed to speak under public comment. Um, otherwise, if you're speaking um, regarding the budget under the public hearing, there'll be another area for you to speak there. So is there anyone else on the line who um, wanted to speak this morning? Other than Daryl Mormon. Daryl Mormon. Okay, Mr. Mormon, I, I, I believe you wanted to speak on the budget during the public hearing. Yes. Yes, that will be coming up. So we will call on you at that time, okay? All right. Okay, we're good, Chairman. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mormon, uh, for coming in today to speak uh, regarding the budget. And Lisa, we look forward to hearing from you real soon, Mr. Mormon. Lisa, you said that's the end of our public comment. With, with that being said, we'll move on to our minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes of the commission meeting of November 17, 2020, the work session minutes of November 16, 2020, the budget retreat of November 12th through 13th, and November 16th, 2020. We had a special call meeting of November 20th, 2020, executive session minutes of November 13th, November 16th, and November 20th. 2020. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. All right, Board of Commissioners, we'll move right into our agenda this morning. We have a presentation, uh, and that'll be rendered by our own our Director Gary Dukes. It's recognition of Jessica Morgan, Parks and Recreation Therapeutic Coordinator for receipt of the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association. Uh, District 5 Outstanding Programmer Award. Director Dukes. There you are. You're muted, Director. Director Dukes, you're muted. You need to unmute your phone. I mean your computer. I'm sorry. There you are. Okay, no problem. Good morning. Good morning. I'm proud to recognize our Therapeutic Recreation Coordinator, Jessica Morgan, for being selected as the GRPA District 5 Outstanding Programmer. Jessica is a 2015 graduate of Georgia Southern University with a degree in Therapeutic Recreation with a minor in Outdoor Recreation. She began working with the Douglas County Parks and Recreation Department in November 2015. In her time here, she's made quite an impact on our community through her consistent growth of programming. She worked closely with the Georgia Special Olympics and has served over 500 special needs citizens and families in Douglas County, including 225 athletes, group home participants, summer campers, and by assisting the school system's special education department to offer virtual Mr. Dukes, I believe you're we're, we're having some te technical difficulty. Just hold on one second. Okay. Um, 
Commissioner You're on mute, Madam Chair. You're on mute, Madam Chair. Okay. Can you hear me now, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, yes. I was going to ask you, as the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee, can you just kind of wrap up what the great uh, things that uh, uh, Director Dukes were, really was saying about Jessica, if you have any just idea of what he was going to say, if you could just wrap it up for him, because we can't hear him at all. Here's what, here's what I recommend, though. I think what we'll do, if we can, Madam Chair, at, at your pleasure, if we could actually just give Gary a moment to kind of come back, but go ahead with the agenda, because as we did in Parks and Rec, he... Um, kind of went in and out and came back. And once we got him straight, he was good, though. So we can kind of work on that was, at the latter. So oh. Jessica and everybody else will just stand by on that. So we can do it that way. That would probably be the best. OK, that's fine. I just wanted to just make yield to you to get, allow you to kind of decide, because I certainly didn't want to miss the moment about the great things that Jessica has done. So we'll come back. Uh, TJ, if you could just a, notify Gary that we'll come that back. back. Chair. Okay. It appears that he, it appears that he's back and and may be good to go. But again, it's spotty. But we can if you want to try him again because it looks like he's he's back. Gary, are you there? Yes. Can okay. you hear me? Go for it. Yes. Yes. You want to okay. try him, Gary? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Madam Chair. Okay. Jessica Jessica is constantly working to develop and add programs to our special pops to help participants gain functioning in physical, social, emotional, cognitive and leisure areas for more holistic lifestyle. She's able to do this through programming over the years, such as arts and crafts, model car building clubs, community clubs, humor therapy groups, outdoor recreation classes, game days, seasonal dances, scavenger hunts, and photography classes. Having completed 600 hours of continuing education courses in the last five years, Jessica increases her applicable knowledge of obtaining a certificate as a past certified therapeutic riding instructor and uses that certification not only in the community setting to help special needs citizens gain skills, knowledge, and abilities in the equine therapy setting, but to throughout the workplace beginning bringing the sport to Douglas County. I am confident that Ms. Morgan will continue to exhibit her passion, dedication, and love for the community and its citizens. Our special needs population in Douglas County adores Jessica, and we are proud to have Ms. Jessica Morgan as the GRPA District 5 Outstanding Programmer on our staff. And that Thank concludes you. my presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Director uh, Dukes, and certainly um, uh, in recognizing Jessica Morgan for her outstanding accomplishments with our special needs population. Uh, someone who has a great aunt who is deceased now, but uh, with special needs, uh, I really deeply appreciate what she has done um, um, and what she's doing to, to motivate and, and move the community forward in terms of our special population, uh, special needs population. Um, certainly, I want to yield to my board of commissioners that they wanted to comment on this, uh, on her amazing accolades this morning. Uh, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, did you have any comments regarding the great things that Jessica is doing for our special needs population? Would you like That's to a, add? Sure. I'll just, it, it, it's nothing more than Gary said it all, how well and great job that she's actually done and done for this county and, and, and continues to do for this county. So, and just, uh, I, I couldn't have said it better. So, Gary, great job. And to Jessica, job well done, and we we'll really appreciate you. Thank you, and I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Any other comments from the board before we go on? Again, uh, Director Dukes, congratulations. Uh, if you could just extend our congratulations to uh, uh, Jessica and on a job well done. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to our next item, which is the public hearing, a uh, public hearing of the 2021 proposed budget. That uh, public hearing, uh, certainly we have a presentation from our own Jennifer Holman, the Director of uh, Finance, uh, and then she will present, and certainly I will open up the public hearing at that time. Jennifer Holman, our uh, Director of Finance, are you available and ready to go? Yes, ma'am. Ma okay. Madam Chair. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have- Yeah, just a quick point of order. Was that a, a proclamation we just read, and should we 
maybe I missed, should we vote on it to adopt it officially? Or was it just sort of a, 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 a recognition? What did we just do? Yeah, it was a recognition. It wasn't a proclamation. Okay. It was it was a presentation. Um, yeah. Okay. Never we mind. Wanted to, no vote is necessary. Oh, okay. We just want we uh, I believe Gary is celebrating her success this morning, just verbally, and uh, certainly we recognize her and appreciate all the great things she's doing. Certainly, we could extend a proclamation, but today is a, was a recognition. Correct. All right. I will move back to Jennifer Hallman. Jennifer, you have the floor okay. to open up with the 2021 proposed budget. Okay, good morning. Let me pull up my presentation. About now. Showing just. You can see it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, staff, citizens. Um, what I'll be doing is just giving a brief overview um, of what's being proposed for your 2021 uh, budget. Uh, this is the presentation prior to um, having the public hearing, as you um, said earlier. Um, after the presentation and after the uh, the public hearing, um, I'll also, uh, if if it be okay, um, pull up the commissioners' comments that we've been tracking since the retreat, and uh, individually uh, address those, or um, you know at least make mention of those, and, and those commissioners can can add to those or address them as well. Um, we'll kind of start off with our main fund, which is the general fund. You can see that we have total recurring revenues of $98,225,842. Um, and it's in different categories. Uh, property taxes current is 55 million. Law, uh, local option sales tax is around 17.8 million. TAVT, which is title ad valorem tax is 7 million. Other taxes is around 6.4. Intergovernmentals, 3.7. Charges for services is 3.2. Courts and law enforcement is 4.2 million. And we have a small miscellaneous account. From our revenue assumptions, again, there's no large one-time revenue sources. Um, this is all recurring revenue, and it is based upon what we anticipate uh, receiving um, for fiscal year ending uh, 2020. Um, that was one of the directives that we were given when we uh, were to set the 21, uh, 2021 general fund revenues. But just as a breakdown, as you can see, our property taxes make up about 57% of our recurring revenue. Local option sales tax is the second largest at 18%. Our TAVT and other taxes make up 7% each. Intergovernmental is 4%, charges for services is 3%, courts and law enforcement is 4%, and the mis miscellaneous is, is under 1%. Uh, since 57% of our revenue comes from property taxes, we just kind of have a, a quick uh, summary down here. Um, it is the same amount of revenue that we're expecting to receive at 93% collection rate for 2020. Uh, therefore, in 2021's budget right now, there's uh, no assumption for new growth or no assumption for reassessment growth. When you look at our general fund expenditures, you can see that um, we have our recurring expenditures of 97.6 million. Um, is general governments around 20.5 million, judicials around 17 million, public safety is 36 million, public works is 5.7 million, health and welfare is 2.6 million, parks and recreation and culture is 5.9 million, planning and community development is 3.8 million, and transfers out to the fire and EMS fund, uh, that portion is 6 million from the general fund. 
In addition to those recurring expenditures, we do have one large expenditure that we needed to budget for in 2021 that normally in the past, um, each department has been able to absorb, um, but we feel like because there is a sunset clause regarding a benefit regarding the sick leave incentive payout and how that's calculated within retirees um, pension payments, uh, we feel that there is going to be that sunset clause that ends December 31st of 2021, and we may have uh, more retirees than what we normally have in an average year. That right now is around $936,000 out of the general fund, um, and there's about $430,000 in the fire and EMS fund. We placed this money in the general appropriations department. We did not place it into the respective departments that may, that may and that's the key word, have the retirement. Um, we kept it in 190 so that if the department does not need the money, then the money stays within the general fund and at the end of the day, it goes back to fund balance. Uh, what you'll probably see next year is if a department um, needs this money, then I will be bringing before a budget amendment or actually budget transfer to transfer it out of general appropriations and placing it into the respective department so they would have the funds to cover it. Uh, so when you take the recurring expenditures at 97.6 million and then the sick leave incentive payout, we're saying is estimated um, if everybody that was qualified that had the hours retires is 936,000 you have a total expenditure budget of $98.5 million. Also to note the retirement BB contribution, um, defined benefit contribution uh, right now for the 2021 budget is set at $10 million uh, with 7.6 million of that coming from the general fund. The other remaining, uh, remaining uh, 2.4 million coming from the E911 fund um, the UNINC, uh, Animal Shelter, uh, Fire and EMS, any fund that has employees, uh, landfill fund uh, also make up, uh, make a contribution to the retirement. But in total, there is a $10 million budget set for the defined benefit contribution. Uh, within the general fund, uh, we always have contingency. Uh, right now, there's about $275,000 in Department 190 contingency. Uh, and uh, as an earmarker, we said about $25,000 of that was for newly elected office needs. I know our county administrator is uh, discussing with the new, newly elected officers uh, coming in, and so we wanted to have a little bit more in our contingency to possibly address some of those needs. The FY21 budget uh, also has no funding for vacant positions. There's no overtime except for public safety. Uh, we reduced most travel and training by 50%. And then we reduced most operating budgets to the lesser of the FY20 adopted, the FY20 amended, or trends. Then after that, in order to get the balance, the budget to balance, we had to an apply, apply an 8.25% across the board cut to all operating, not salary and benefits. This is just operating line items within each department, such as their training, their supplies, their professional services, automotive maintenance, um, property maintenance. There was an 8.25% across the board cut. Since the budget um, retreat, there was the comment that there wanted to be some funding in there for the operations for the new senior center and um, rec center. So we adjusted those numbers and you'll see later in this PowerPoint that it does include a half a year operations for the new senior center and rec center. Uh, other than that, there's no budget improvement request and capital in nature. Um, again, after discussions at the budget retreat, um, those are going to be reviewed or revisited and currently they're delayed until March of next year. Um, this pie chart just shows where the dollars are spent by function. You can see that uh, the largest function is public safety at 37%. Public works is 6%. Judicial 17%. General government's 21%. 
transfers out to the fire and EMS fund is 6%. Planning and community development is 4%. Parks and recreation is 6%. And health and welfare is 3%. We also talk about, you know, the, within the functions of government, you know, it's always asked, well, how much of the dollar do we really have? Um, can we are, are used that can be used for capital projects or for the different needs within the community? Like what are the different groups between salary and benefits, our debt service, our operating expenses. So this takes the same budget that we just talked about, and instead of doing it by functions, we wanted to let um, the public and the board know how much um, of the budget goes towards salary and benefits, and that's 64% of the budget is salary and benefits. So that's your salary, that's your insurance, your workers' comp, your retirement. All of that is 64% of the budget. Your debt service is 1%, and that debt service is um, some small leases that we have within the county. Uh, this is not the SPLOS debt service because that's not paid out of the general fund. This is strictly just some lease purchases that we have. 1% um, um, out of next year's budget is the sick leave incentive payout that we I've mentioned earlier that we needed to budget for. 6% is the transfer out to the fire and EMS fund. <clears throat> and then 28% uh, um, is remaining for operating um, expenses. So here's the probably more important or updated slide that um, y'all uh, were given last Wednesday with this presentation. This was, uh, or this actually lists the budget changes during and after the retreat. Um, you can see we'll start with the first one that uh, per chair, um, she said to delay all BIRs, which are budget improvement requests, and revisit those in March. We'll go in detail of what made up that 2.6 on, on, the, on the next slide. Uh, so we reduced the budget by 2.6 at that time. Um, then we added a half a year for the senior center operations per the chair of 200,000 a half a year for the rec center operations per the chair for 300,000. And this was after discussions with the chair and y'all at the retreat, as well as the day porter for the tax office for $23,040. Um, there was also a correction that needed to be made after discussing with uh, the vice chair, uh, part-time people, um, Part-time salaries are usually adjusted, and we do those here. Uh, and we lumped all the part-time into one category without realizing that we forgot that the part-time legislative aides are actually on a contract. Um, so we needed to go back and adjust um, the each district's budget so that it fit the contract in which the, um, the board uh, approved for them to be paid, which was $40,000 a year. So this $9,213 is over, you know, three, the three legislative aides uh, to get them back to the $40,000 that was originally approved in their annual contract. Um, there was another correction regarding the um, District Board of Commissioners Department operations. Back in 2020, or for this year's budget, FY20, uh, where the district commissioners had $40,000 for the legislative aid, and then they had an additional $10,000 for dip, uh, various department operations. This is not the reimbursable amount of the 6,000. This is um, just for day-to-day -day department operations. Um, what happened with that was because a request was not put in, we do zero-based budgeting, a request was not put in for the FY21 uh, it did not get placed in the budget, and, and speaking with Vice Chair, um, he said no, that that was the intention was for them to uh, have a that $10,000 every every year. So I put the, this is a correction to put the $10,000 in each district's budget for those department operations. Um, and then the last thing is the Community Service Board Mental Health Grant. That was in an annual allotment by the BOC per vice chair. Uh, I believe at one time it was been it had been given to core, and then um, it has changed. And I believe either last year or the year before, I'm not quite sure. 
uh, that was uh, some funding that is to be going to the community service board for the mental health grant or what we call the mental health grant. I believe they've spent about 25,000 of the 50 so far this year. So the uh, this next slide just shows you the the 2.6 that we removed when we were at the budget retreat um, and it was you know kind of a consensus was that hey let's let's remove these and let's uh, remove them temporarily let's delay these budget improvement requests let's see how we officially end the year for 2020 and then we can revisit or, you know in mid to late March of 2021. And so what these uh, items were was the first one was the transition from the tax main software to Tyler Tech, um, or at least have the new, um, at least go out to bid for new software for the tax commissioner. That was 976,000. Then there was also uh, in there for 35 Tahoes for a 36 month lease for a take, car, a take home car program and the equipment for those Tahoes. That totaled about 1.24 million. However, um, the sheriff did make a commitment that he would contribute a half a million dollars toward that 1.25. So it would um, help uh, help some of the um, costs within the general fund. There was three mowings at $300,000. There was a little litter pickup at 100,000 and then information services had a, uh, an intrusion detection system for 20,000 that um, is again on the list to be revisited in March. So this kind of gives you a uh, summary of all the numbers I've just pretty much um, went over. You know, right now our current policy for fund balance is to have a minimum of 10% of expenditures. Uh, so just, this just shows you that our recurring revenues that's being proposed today is 98.2. Our recurring expenditures are 97.6. Uh, when we factor in the sick leave incentive payout of 936,000, we have total expenditures are 98.5. Uh, therefore, our expenditures are, our revenues are under our expenditures by 339,000, primarily due to the sick leave incentive payout. Um, our beginning estimated unassigned fund balance is around 11.9 million. So we estimate that we would be at 11.6 million, and that would be about 11.7% of our expenditures. So we are still within our current fund balance policy of a minimum of 10%. As you know, we talk about the general fund. A majority of the time when you hear from me, it's mainly general fund, but by law y'all are required um, and we are required to report on all the other funds that um, we have uh, within the county. Um, the first section is your special revenue funds. Uh, they consist of your animal control services, your district attorney asset forfeiture account, your drug abuse treatment and education, which is your date fund, your emergency telephone E911 system, the fire protection services and EMS, your hotel motel tax, your law library, the neighborhood stabilization program, sheriff asset forfeiture, sheriff inmate commissary, sheriff other programs, sidewalk, state court technology fund, the unincorporated service district, and the victim assistance. All of these funds um, are self-sufficient. They have their own fund balance. They have their own funding source. Um, and those budgets total $29.2 million. Other than special revenue funds, we do have uh, capital project funds, debt service fund, Enterprise Fund, which is the Landfill Solid Waste Disposal Fund, and then our Internal Service Funds, which is the um, Self-Insurance and Workers' Comp Funds. When you take all of these uh, funds, add the general fund um, for a total of all funds is $180,699,817. As uh, we discussed at the retreat, this is kind of the schedule we're going on um, as far as the budget. Uh, today is the public hearing. 
um, and uh, we hope to be able to uh, bring forth a budget uh, to be adopted uh, next at the next meeting, December the 15th. Uh, once that budget is adopted, we do the work up here, get it in the system, hit the go button, and on January 1st, our new fiscal year begins. So that is all of my presentation regarding this, um, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you much, uh, so much, Jennifer, for your um, presentation regarding the budget. Uh, and I really appreciate the Board of Commissioners as uh, presented, uh, as we work together collaboratively to uh, present a flat budget this year, knowing that 2021 will be the same, uh, similar to 20. Um, and we wanted to double down on our expenses, uh, take a peek at the uh, possibility of just covering revenues until we can determine which way this uh, virus is going to take us. Certainly, as I've said on numerous occasions, this virus controls us. We have no control over it. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm, I'm going to open this public hearing now. This public hearing is now open to the citizens of Douglas County to allow them to weigh in. And certainly, I would love to hear from our citizens. So, Lisa, can you take it from here? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have two individuals signed up. We also have, um, I believe, Mr. Uh, Greg Baker, our tax commissioner, and Ms. Um, probate judge-elect Christina Peterson are on the call. And I know they would like to speak as well. Would you um, prefer them to go um, first, Chairman, or um, let the citizens speak first? I'd rather put the citizens at this time and then our public uh, elected officials, but allow our citizens. This is the purpose of the public hearing. Okay. Citizens. Okay. Um, first, we have Ms. Sharon Bactel. Are you on the line, Ms. Bactel? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Hello? Um, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You can go ahead and start and just uh, remember you have three minutes to address the board. Okay. Um, thank you. This is Sharon Bactel. I live at 6331 South Skyline Drive. And thank you for allowing me to speak. And I'd like to say that uh, Ms. Hallman answered a lot of my questions I had about the budget uh, just from her presentation. Uh, last December, we were told by a commissioner that this county had enough money for any disaster. And three commissioners proceeded to vote in a budget that was $5 million over estimated revenues. Evidently, this wasn't true, and our county ended up in the red by millions of dollars. We were told you needed 27% tax increase because the pandemic caused loss of sales tax. Uh, the 27% tax increase netted you more than $9 million. How much lower is the sales tax compared to 2019? According to the last finance report, the LOST are only about 80,000 behind 2019, not millions of dollars. Overspending has been a problem with this commission and has caused the de deficit. On paper, this budget seems to be closer to being balanced by keeping expenditures closer to revenues. Ms. Hallman has stated at the budget retreat uh, that all departments were cut 8.25%, but will those cuts be kept? Already I have seen increases in budgets from the budget retreat compared to the public hearing. For example, the tax commissioner had a BIR request for a day porter for $23,000 on the on the public hearing budget. His budget was increased $23,000. The parks and recreation budget was increased $500,000 to start up the senior and rec centers. I guess the sheriff's department paid the price since his budget was reduced by a million dollars. Already we have newly elected officials wanting to double her budget to hire people to do her job. If she can't do the job within your given budget, why are you running for office? This seems to be a trend of Douglas County elected officials. The tax commissioner has raised his budget 40% and then overspent it every year. The coroner increased her budget 40%. Commissioners have hired aides claiming they need help with emails and town halls. I haven't seen any town halls where the citizens could comment or discuss. When I questioned the tax commissioner was allowed to give bonuses, the commissioner 
said it wasn't my fault. How did the elected officials and department heads get money for their budgets? Doesn't it come from you who hold the purse strings? As I recall, last December, a slush fund was included in the tax commissioner budget and was questioned, and yet three commissioners voted to pass that budget. It seems like some budget should be vetted better to cut the pork. As I said many times before, this commission has a spending problem. You have a very long BIR list. You must learn to say no to new employees and projects that we cannot afford. I believe the economy of 2021 will not be the economy of 2019. We must be conservative, conservative in our spending so that we don't have the same repeat of the 2020 disaster. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bachtel. Um, next, we have Pastor Daryl Momin. Are you on the line, Mr. Momin? Yes, yes, I'm on the line. Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Um, you can uh, all right. Would restate your name for the record, and uh, all right. you will have to... This is Pastor Darrell Moment. I pastor the old mountaintop Baptist Church there in Douglas County. Listen, uh, I, I hear uh, the budget. I hear some of the things that they're talking about. And I hear some people uh, really don't understand certain things about uh, a new job. They have a whole nother level of responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. No, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the, the the new elected judge, um, that that they're asking for as far as uh, the level of of of, of uh, what type of school, what type of diploma, what type of uh, degrees you have is far different from just 25 years old to a high school diploma to have that job. Uh, that 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 Christina uh, Peterson applied for. Now they're asking for a lawyer that has seven years experience in that particular, which deal with a level of 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 something that's so powerful. And I just I just want to say to the board, I really appreciate y'all kindness about uh, listening uh, to the community. But it's amazing that. Some people that listen don't understand all the criteria, uh, but some folk, and I'm not talking about um, the whole um, commissioner, uh, uh, commissioners. Some, some folk are really trying to destroy the level of of character of these commissioners uh, because they're trying to make it look bad uh, because of the era we in. But I ask you to stand strong when it comes to the budget to understand even when it comes to this new judge that you must really pay her at the level of the rest of the judges because one judge came in and they put him in and paid him what they pay people of that level. And you got to operate that way because it's right, not not a chance as one commissioner said said that that that, that proves something of the proof the proof have been the people elected her and the proof have been not only the people elected her, but 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 they're asking for her character or her uh, her uh, uh, level of, um, of experience has to be there, and you have to stretch it just a half. But it's not just to stretch it to to, to just make money, but it's to give what's due to this level. And I, I appreciate you for listening to us, and I appreciate that that the information that is given for real, that is uh, totally um, um, sensible and is nothing that's uh, rocket science that, that, that we have to listen to and, and to give them minimum payment, it don't look good because what the people had for years. So thank you for listening to me and, and I fight for all of you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I, I wanted to ask if there are any that did not sign up that would like to speak. 
Yes, Mr. Curry. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I want to thank everybody, the county commissioners, and and taking the time out to listen to some of the issues that the residents have. I know I looked at the budget, um, previous budgets, and this budget, and I see that we're spending, you know, amounts of money on law enforcement, uh, money in which is duly needed. Uh, also, uh, one thing that we need to really look at is you know, growth in the community. And I think, you know, as I, I see the buildings going up, you know, I, one thing that I really in the community really needs are uh, to be advertising for more restaurants, more things that's gonna come and keep people in the community of Douglas County versus going to the city of Atlanta or other areas of Cobb and things of that nature. Because, um, you know, our residents here want to have things that um, they can be here more and do things here in this community. And so with the recreation center, and I know that we got COVID going on, there's a lot of other things that's going on and you have to shift funds to make things work and things are not getting uh, less expensive, it's getting more expensive um, to live in the community. And I kind of understand the reason why uh, the tax increase um, because of the deficit that we have, but we also need to look at what is going to bring revenue to the community, uh, i.e. restaurants, um, entertainment, things of that nature, that's going to keep the money inside of Douglas County. I know that we have businesses who are coming here to Douglas County, and they also provide revenue for the community as well. But the one thing that we need to look at is things in this proposal. I know we're widening the streets. I know we're doing things of that nature, but we need to be advocating for uh, businesses, different uh, high-end restaurants, food chains to be coming to the community. But thank you for what you do. I know it's not easy based on uh, everybody has a different agenda, but the thing about it, the agenda should be making the betterment of the community here in Douglas County uh, that people want to live, work, and play here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Is there any other citizens that would like to speak? Okay, Commissioner, uh, our Chairman, I'm sorry. Um, I guess that's um, it for the citizens. It, would you like to move on to the elected officials? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have. Who, who do we have first? Is it uh, Commissioner Baker? Uh, yeah, Mr. Baker and okay. Mr. Peterson. Hello, everyone. How are you? Great. I, I've been listening in a little bit on the conversations, and I'd, I'd love for the young lady who uh, says that my budget's grown by 40% to come to my office, sit down, and go over my budget with me. I think it's a little misleading. I think you've been listening to one commissioner, which is Commissioner Geidner. Uh, my budget has not increased by 40%. I would love for you to sit down and stop looking at social media and listening to things that aren't true. My office is always open to you. I'd love to sit down and go over my budget with you. If you notice my budget increased somewhat because I used to be in the courthouse. Courthouse paid most of my fees because I was in the courthouse. They did not, they did all the janitorial and supplies that were needed for me at the courthouse. Since I have moved to an independent building, I'm responsible for all my cleaning, all my supplies, and not only for this building, but all three buildings surrounding me. So all of that is in my budget. I'm also responsible now. It used to be that the state bought our computers, our printers, our scanners that they require us to have because they installed the new system. They sent the Board of Commissioners, and thank you, Board of Commissioners, because a lot of times this has gone unnoticed, a notice that they will no longer supply those things. So the state installed the new system and told all of us, that's the Board of Commissioners, myself. We will no longer supply that. 
we had to come up with almost $3 million to provide and buy new computers, new printers, new scanners, and maintain that system ourselves. And that's what the state did to the Board of Commissioners. So when you get your facts, get them straight, and understand it's not just the Board of Commissioners or myself that is doing this. It's something that the state mandated and said we will do. And you're not looking at that because you don't you didn't get that information. You're only getting pieces of the information from people that want to keep things going in the county and keep chaos going in the county and dividing us instead of instead of uh, bringing us together. They started doing this with the corner. Now they're starting doing it with me. And I think it's uncalled for. And I think when you got a question, call that department. And I think any department head will sit down with you, go over their budget, go over everything with you. So get the correct information, not phony information off the internet. It's also information that my sister is my, cleans my office. My sister doesn't even live in the state of Georgia. She still lives in Maryland. So again, get your information correctly and stop looking at the internet and getting false information. And that's all I got for today right now, but I'll be happy to come back on. Thank you so much, Tax Commissioner. Next, we have uh, uh, our newly elect judge, uh, Christina Peterson. And then Christina Peterson. Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Mm hmm Okay, good morning. Um, okay, I wanted to talk briefly about um, the budget. I didn't see the particulars of the budget. Um, I'm unaware of any changes to the to the budget in regards to the probate court, but I just wanted to speak on it. It seems like a lot of information for the public um, is, um, I understand it's not understood, so I just want to break it down a little bit. Um, the reason I came before to the Board of Commissioners, before I came in office, is because I don't want to um, disrupt the public. I, I want this to be planned out. Um, the operating expenses, from what I saw of Judge Hamrick's proposed operating expenses, it looked like his total operating expenses without salaries was about $18,000. Now, that's not sufficient for the increased judicial responsibilities that I will have to have, including jury trials. That was not a current function of the court. This is amongst other functions that I, that will be increased. So the 138,000 is really the low end of what I would need for the transition to an Article Six probate court. Um, this court doesn't have the same operations as the current court under Judge Hamrick, and I'll discuss that in detail in a moment. I originally asked for a staff of four part time, uh, four full time, and additional one part time. I understand the courthouse is tight. I understand there is little to no office space. However, that kind of it really doesn't uh, have any bearing on the need. And I believe we can work our way up to that, but it's a need. Um, now, in regards to the salary budget numbers, I do want to note that Judge Hamrick's 2020 budget numbers for salary and his proposed 2021 salary budget numbers had that the numbers in there in order to pay my salary, as well as the current staff, as well as up to one to two additional staff. That those were the numbers that were presented to me. However, to my dismay, once I received the updated budget, that salary was reduced. The salary budget was reduced by over seventy-five, well, about seventy-five thousand dollars. That's more than the eight point two percent, two five percent salary cut across the, uh, I mean, cut across the bud the board that the the board of commissioners is saying was cut from all budgets. So, nevertheless, I'm asking that the board of commissioner restore. Uh, at minimum, uh, Hamrick's 2020 budget in order to pay uh, the requested salary budget that uh, for the additional people that I need, at least I'll get something to work with, one to two people to work with and be able to provide a salary for myself. Now, it, let's talk about the salary. Um, my certain constituents will ask, and I've heard them ask, and I've, I've saw them asking on, on Facebook and other social media, doesn't she know what her job duties were? 
And when she when she ran for office and the answer was yes, I knew that by running for an elected position, I knew that running for this office, this court would have to transform. This court would transform into an Article six court, which gives me expanded jurisdiction and significant significantly more job duties than the current probate. Certain constituents constituents would ask, well, didn't she know what the pay was? I assumed yes due to the Board of Commission being fair and consistent with the salaries for judicial seats comparable to mine. Board of Commissioners, I'm not asking for favor. I'm asking for you to review the facts and continue to be fair and consistent. And let me explain. There are three types of judges in Douglas County that must have the exact same qualifications as the probate. Superior Court, State Court, Probate. These qualifications amongst several are you have to be at least age 30, a licensed attorney, and, be, and have been practicing law for seven years. Now the board has recently and consistently brought in new judges at the same salary as other judges with these same qualifications. For example, Cynthia Adams appointment by the governor, she came in making the same amount as Judge McLean and Chief Judge Emerson. Also, there was a Brian Fortno appointment to the state court. He came in at the same salary as Judge Barker, who'd been in that position for years. At that time, it was not about politics. At that time, it was not about the judges having to prove themselves. It was about a consistency and fairness across the board. The probate has a base salary required by law for a jurisdiction of our size, but that base law numbers are for someone who had the original qualifications of the probate judge age 25 and a high school diploma, age 25 and a high school diploma. If you are under a certain population size, all you have to have is be 25 and a high school diploma or equivalent. Out of 159 counties, 132 can elect someone with those qualifications, age 25, high school diploma. However, now Douglas County is now one of the 27 counties that must elect a probate judge with heightened qualifications that are identical to state and superior court. Thus, it is fair and consistent that the judge that comes in must transition the court, be paid a salary that aligns with his or her colleagues with the same qualifications and job requirements. I submitted a letter to you all by Kevin Holder, who is the the executive director of the Council of Probate Judges, and he tells you about these heightened job responsibilities. He says, Article Six probate courts have expanded jurisdiction, including holding jury trials. In addition, they share concurrent jurisdiction with superior courts regarding the following proceedings, declaratory ju judgments involving fiduciaries, tax motivated estate planning disposition of property of a minor or ward, approval of settlement agreements disposing of a state contrary to the terms of a testator's will, and so on. But you have that information. It's ex it's expanded job responsibilities, it's expanded jurisdiction. Only three types of judges in Douglas County have jury trial requirements and those responsibilities, and that is state court judge, superior court judge, and now your probate judge elect. With all this, I have come to before my board and the constituents to ask for a fair and equitable salary. I have been offered so far at least 50 to 55,000 less than my appointed and elected colleagues that hold the same job duties and the same qualifications, not including the additional supplements they receive for things like accountability courts on top of their base salaries. At this time, like before, I'm not asking that it be, I'm asking that it not be about politics. I'm asking that it not be about a judge having to prove themselves. I'm asking that it continues to be about consistency across the board. I ask for the gap to be bridged by supplementing the proposed salary that for, for me by the 50,000. In the alternative, I also understand that now the, the probate court has a vital record supplement that can assist with the salary while we're in this devastation of our budget. The law says one who is both probate and custodial custodian of vital records of a county is entitled to keep fees paid to the person as a custodian of vital records, and the county is not entitled to such fees, and that's Porter versus Cowhead County. It's the old law, but basically a lot of counties, the probate judge gets this vital record supplement. 
again, I'm just trying to reach the threshold, the minimum of what everybody else is getting. But even with the supplement, my still my salary with what's been offered to me, it still won't be consistent and comparable to my judicial colleagues. So I'm asking for a resolution in the, in, in the alternative that all fees from vital records go to the probate judge and at least there's a $30,000 increase in the agreed upon consensus for my salary to align with the judicial colleagues that for the same pay, for the same work and the same qualifications, which is currently at a fifty to $55,000 gap. I'm asking that you all bridge that gap. I'm asking that Chairman, Chairwoman Ramona Jackson Jones, Commissioner Terenia Carthen, Commissioner Ann Guider, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, Commissioner Kelly Robinson, I'm asking that you review my salary and my budget that's requested. And I hope and pray that you all keep it fair and keep it consistent. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, um, Judge-elect Peterson, appreciate you. So, uh, Lisa, is that the end of our public comment? I just wanna make sure before I close, if anyone else, we have anyone else sign up? Uh, no one else signed up. Okay, at this time, this public hearing, since we have no one else uh, signed up to speak, this public hearing is now closed. All right, B Board of Commissioners, this certainly is an opportunity for you to weigh in on the budget, and then we, we'll move Madam on Chair. to our <clears throat> oh, uh, Commissioner Robinson. All right, let's go ahead and keep this thing moving. This is not our first rodeo at the budget. Director Hallman, you ready to walk us yes, through? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, let's sir. Get this going. So, um, I heard a budget duly noted. Um, um, I, and first, let me just back up to the citizens. Appreciate your input. Um, obviously, we know that there's a lot of um, ideological differences that, that may exist within the county, different beliefs, different um, slants. It's all good. Everybody weigh in, everybody take a position. Um, but at the end of the day, the Board of Commissioners will um, make the decision accordingly. Um, that being said, um, I, I'm going to, um, um, one of the things I want to address really quickly, um, Director Hallman, is obviously there is a fiscal, fiscal policy reform um, act that I sponsored that um, that is before my fellow commissioners for consideration. Today will be the second reading of it. Uh, again, there's really no action that's necessary from you today. Obviously, this is the budget, the current budget's hearing, but that policy is very, very important. Uh, it, it, as I said before, and, and sort of like the comment earlier, um, uh, it, it will put certain guardrails and certain controls on the administration to ensure that we have a more stable um, budgeting process and budgeting uh, planning. Um, so uh, I, I want you guys to take a look at that. Please, to my, my, my fellow peers, give us your comments. Um, send them directly to Director Hallman. Um, and we have a finance committee. What date, um, Director Hallman? Um, a special call because we had to skip the last one. But when is the special call finance? It is, this it is this Thursday, December 3rd at 2 o'clock. All right, so if you can guys get me your comments, uh, again, this won't be the last time, but give me your comments, at least initially, on what's being proposed, um, especially around the fund balance, et cetera. Uh, I think everything else is pretty pretty straightforward, uh, but we'll, 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 we'll cover that later. So I'm gonna keep going and stay on this budget, but duly noted, give me your comments so I can take them in and incorporate them on the new um, legislation that's being proposed. All right, D Director Hallman, let's go down my tab, my list, take it from the top okay. to the bottom so we can keep this going. Okay, uh, what we'll do is, um, as Commissioner um, Robinson mentioned, um, as we were doing the budget retreat um, presentation, Sabrina was off to the side, just making various notes, comments from each of the board members. You have been provided this list. Um, last uh, Wednesday, uh, we provided this list as well as uh, the presentation. So that's what I'm bringing um, that you should see on your screen right now. We'll start with Commissioner Robinson. Of course, the first thing he, he just addressed was the fiscal policy update. Uh, the next comment was, wants funding for senior center and rec center. It doesn't have to be full capacity. Okay. Let you me just here. keep, keep nope. reading these. I'm going I'm to hit, hit them as we go. Okay. So hit them as we go. All right, so for the senior center and the community center, again, the voters, um, the citizens of Douglas County voted for that in 2016. Uh, they were educated and made aware that there would be an increase in operating expense for that, and they agreed to it. Therefore, it passed as a referendum. 
We've had four years to plan for that, uh, to set aside money. One more time, back to discipline, back to priorities. Um, I'm not certain I can sit here and reconcile, well, what was everything else that got stuffed into the budgets prior to that to not acknowledge something that the voters did? Was it staff and administration um, toys and shiny objects? All right, we'll get real on this budget. All right, so for that, I, I thought that was important. I thank the administration for at least considering a half a year. I'm going to respect my uh, my Parks and Rec Committee peers. And, and so, Director Hall, and all I'm saying is that, that um, and to Gary Dukes, um, at a minimum, needs to have both a center manager on day one in January to plan for those, I guess, I don't know how y'all going to lay out the schedule for a half a year, but y'all got to get ahead of this. You, you, you can't wait until it opens and then hire people. No different again, you can wait until January 1 to, to all of a sudden now empower that new judge. No, you plan for it. All right, so we'll make that point. So I think the six months is appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and swing that over to, to Director Hallman. I'm going to yield on that comment to my Parks and Rec Committee peers. So just say, I've addressed it, move on. We're going to move on to the next one. So we don't have to come back to that for me. Go ahead. All right, the next um, item is maybe give the sheriffs I'm getting some feedback from somebody. Can you guys all turn off? Okay. Uh, still getting it. Is TJ yeah, so that, Mark? That's phone number 404-427-6859, I believe. If you would, please mute your phone. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, the next one was maybe give the sheriff's office less cars. Doesn't have to be 35 cars. Okay. Uh, my, my comment and, and acknowledging, and this is important, um, whereas I, I'm going to disagree with, with um, perhaps some perceptions about uh, citizen engagement. All right. So that First Amendment goes both ways. Um, I am one of the most actively involved in my district as relates to engaging my citizens. I, I don't sit in an ivory tower and I don't just cascade down commentary to the public. I get feedback. I get engagement. For District 2, I can't speak to anybody else, but I'm actively involved because their, their input is necessary to listen. And I aggregate what District 2, what, 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 what amounts to what, what its spirit is what its character is, right? There is no single voice. There's no one way. Uh, there is no, I, and, and, and please understand, I don't believe in no government. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that we don't want any taxation. Let's take that off the grid, All right. So we, you, you know exactly who I am and what I stand for. But what I do believe is, is like, okay, District 2 has a unique character area. And it's important to get their, their comments and their feedback and say, okay, so um, in my last town hall, which citizens did provide input, and there's a difference between input and propaganda and hijacking and the things that have happened over the years. Now, I want to acknowledge Greg Berkman. I know there's propaganda. Don't do that. Right? It's the same thing that happened with President Obama, all the Tea Party, far right. No, no, you attack the politicians and stuff to get your point across. Well, you can attack me, but you ain't going to move me. You're not going to move my thoughts by doing it that way. You can submit what you want to in a respectful way, and I'll probably listen. I'm okay if you're upset, you complain, I get all that, but it's how you approach me. I know exactly who I am now. Now, I, I, I'll take all the lightning rod for all the, the hate. I'm that guy. You'll not move me from the principal things of like, okay, the principal is what's needed in this county, right? So I, I, I mean, so I, I agree with the misinformation. Like that's not of God, that that that's not of of, of this county, and it, and it, and, I, I'm, and I know we're going through this this dark space, and we'll come out this on the other side. I I, I do believe that that we're, we're going to be okay for it, but you're still not going to move me, and that I know when the citizens elected me, I ran the decision. Right. There is no. So all the attacks, all that is like, OK, that's really not a God. Now we could go here, but that doesn't really move anything. Come on. You can do better than that. But I had to address that. All right. I had to address it. All right. Let me keep going. All right. So to that point, um, Director Hallman, um, 
as relates to um, um, community input, I did a poll. And in my district, um, they weighed in and said the following things were the priorities for District 2, as I've consistently done and solicited input for 12 straight years. And that input has helped me move and weigh in on every priority that the county has to consider. Right. So I've been pretty consistent. You guys know I've done these polls and these surveys and at my town halls. So I can't speak for nobody else, but I know how District 2 and they know how I've done it, which is why I've got four straight. Right. So with that being said, public safety was number one this year. Uh, um, health and welfare was number two. And um, the last one was parks and rec was number three out of the seven um, core functions of government. Um, I did hear you say that um, the sheriff, I, again, we couldn't afford 35 cars. Can't get there. Right. I mean, public safety is important. I've always argued, let's get those sheriff. They need horses. We don't need buildings. If y'all want to really have public safety, the, the building is after the fact. Give these guys cars and Tahoes and let them go chase them bad guys. They got to go hunt them down. I'm game with that. But the, the historical policy has put us in a place. It ain't about the current budget. That is a lie. That is wrong. That is not the sole reason. It is the historical policy of building caging people and caging animals, five million cash out of the budget. Don't do that. If you're going to speak to it and we're going to argue this, we're going to, we're going to argue it accurately. Take your position now, but don't lie about the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Right? I'm okay with your qualitative arguments, but let's get this right. That's not how we got here. And it ain't because of that single budget, but that was part of it. But don't act like that pandemic ain't happening. I disagree. I disagree. Anybody thinks that our budget was not impacted by that pandemic, I'm going to disagree. No, that pandemic is real. Yes, everybody's here. Yes, the SPLOS is, is, is up, but you act like this thing, destruction ain't happening. That's because Congress is pumping this thing up with warping. You act like we ain't about to get dark right here and when this winter, when, it, when this thing drops. So it's like, don't fall for it. For the citizens who are just tuning in for the first time and you may feel this little propaganda stuff out here, we're telling you what this thing is really about. Stay tuned. All right, so for the sheriff, I do acknowledge it. Um, we, we, we recognize that that stuff should have been taken care of as part of the SPLOS. It can't. My comment was, well, we'll see what we can do, recognizing that, yeah, we may not have much cash, but we ain't got no debt either. Uh-huh. Which is something I always defended against. Protect our credit to protect our debt position. We have some little small amount, but Jennifer, what did you say about 1%? We, and relatively speaking, we got very little debt comparison, right? Other than the SPLOS was a whole different funding mechanism. Is that accurate? That is correct. All right, let me keep going on this. Let me get through that. So Sheriff Dooley noted, you're going to work that out with Madam Chair. You guys are agency heads. Y'all keep keep working at that. I'm open to that. Maybe work something out, but hey, it is what it is. Keep going, Jennifer. Got to go to my next topic. I got to get out of this. Okay. Gotta keep going. How do we deal with capital expenditures and fund balance? Should this be a policy? Yeah, I mean, I just made that point. I mean, we're spending, you know, five million cash uh, out of our checking account for an animal shelter. Well, that that think about that, guys. Five million dollars for a building to cage cats and dogs. And they asked the question earlier, well, we got a $5 million deficit. Well, well, there's $5 million that you burnt in one moment. Not to mention the $9 million in a rollback, that's $14 million. Do the math. A $5 million building, and for five straight years, you roll back the taxes. You did not consider inflation. Everything still increased. Even if we weren't giving raises, it increased by natural nature. Nine plus five is 14 million. Add the pandemic on top of that. So it's a net net effect. If you want to play the math game, I'm your guy. Anybody, anytime. They want to say how we got here and what this is about. It's the historical plus the current. But don't act like that, that the pandemic didn't happen. And don't act like that historical spin rolling back. Nine million dollars, guys. When your budget is supposed to be balanced, but you kept rolling back the revenue, but your expenses naturally inflated, you roll back the inflation. Come on now, do better than that. All right, all right, Jennifer. So I think I've addressed that capital thing. As it relates to a policy, I think they get it. I think the policy that's being proposed right now will address that capital spend because you ain't gonna have much to work with. So I ain't gonna worry about that right now. Keep moving, yeah. Jennifer. Keep going. Uh, he wants to talk about the security system for the jail. All right, I think we sort of addressed that right to a certain extent that's out there. Again, um, to our um, um, Chief Connors and, and all those over in public safety alone, Sheriff, 
we recognize that we, we recognize that that because it's a security, uh, it, it's on the list. Um, if there's some kind of way, if there's some specs or something that we need to get ahead of this, we can do an RFI. I'd love to go ahead and entertain that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting information on that now uh, for consideration, because if it's as important as you say it is, you don't have to defend it. You don't have to, it's like, I hear you. Keep moving, Jennifer. Move on. Uh, staff attorney. Yep. Um, obviously, this time last year, we talked about legal services, um, looking at them. Uh, we chose to take no action. We were trying to figure out the committee to do that. I know in last week's last meeting, we talked about considering a an in-house counsel one more time. So, like, probably the, the need is there, but, hey, what are we going to do about it? We've only got a paralegal. Um, I, I've asked Madam Chair to convene a panel for us to look at legal services to bid those out. Um, we've got that in motion. The first meeting will be, I think, tomorrow or Thursday. So, let's just say that's in motion. So, take off that in-house counsel. We'll just sort of bid out our services and see how that um, uh, will pay out for us and see if we get a better better consideration. So okay. move on. Next. Uh, Community Service Board opio Opioid Mental Health. All right. So on that one, um, again, we talked about this yesterday. I want to acknowledge. Um, um, can we speak to um, um, when it comes to the accountability courts? Um, uh, Director Pruitt. I'm going to wait because I think he's on the agenda for later. He can come back and address this. But I want to make sure that, that, that back to that same point that was made earlier. Um, we have um, um, for housing, we gave $150,000 to um, Judge Bo McLean for drug and DUI court. Uh, when Judge Adams came on board and Judge McLean gave up responsibility over to the new judge, the Board of Commissioners made sure, at least my sponsorship was to make sure that they were equal. Coming out the gate, she got 150000 because he had 150000 for housing. Consistency, fair and equitable. Now, I think that's important that, 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 that to that point that she didn't get a house that was $50,000. That would have been like two-thirds or three-fifths of the current judge. It's consistency. Right. So I, 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 I but what I noticed, Director Hallman, was that her money disappeared some kind of way. And I want to make sure that that was restored, that I, I need for the record. Hundred fifty thousand dollars is still there for Judge McClain for his his housing and for um, Judge Adams. Her hundred fifty thousand dollars is there. So can you address that or Director Pruitt? Can y'all? I need that confirmed. I got to keep going. It's going to be yes or no. But that should be there. There was no reason for that to be removed because the Board of Commissioners did that as a group. It's like Congress. Once we affect this wasn't administrative, we put that in motion so it can't be undone unless the Board of Commissioners undo it. Can you confirm for us, Director Hall? Yes, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a history. It was approved or, or adopted in the 2020 budget. Then I believe um, two things happened. Um, one, when uh, the budget was getting cut during millage rate time, um, that 150 was removed. But then there was conversation, and Sabrina, if you want to help me chime in, then there was conversation between uh, Sabrina, the assistant finance director at the time, and Tim Pruitt in regards to a grant he received and stating that that 150000 was no longer needed. Am I correct, Sabrina? Yes, that's correct. And if Tim's on here and he wants to chime in, he can do as well. But um, Yes, and we've even copied Judge Adams on it, so she's aware of it as well. And we asked, you know, if this was the same, and I didn't hear a response back, so I'm assuming she's okay. But if there is an additional need, if you guys would let us know. But as far as we've been notified, the Hope Court grant is what that 150000 was, and we've been awarded it. Thank and I know Tim Pruitt's working with Judge Adams on that. All right, let me let me let me weigh in on that. That, that is uh, a wrong assumption. I spoke to both Judge McLean and Judge Adams over the holiday, directly, and I just recently spoken to um, 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 Tim Pruitt as a director. So to the administration, that 150. Now I understand that we may take money to leverage for a grant. Got it. You leveraged it, but the need for the housing is still there. It's not a numbers game. It's a needs game. It's like okay. We're so focused internally on paperwork and administration. Like, okay, they still need no to help housing. Drug and opiate use have expanded because of the pandemic. People have real issues, and we're going to not fund their housing. Like, okay, so you get my point. 
Uh, I'm Director Pruitt, you want to weigh in now or not, but we already talked about this, that the housing need is still there. The 150 has, to, you, you can't, one more time, you can't take her money, but you, why, why didn't you take his money for the grant for that? Be consistent or make it split, right? Housing is housing, money is money, fair, equitable. Both get their 150, please put that back in. Be consistent. Tim, you want to weigh in on this? Director Pruitt? He may not be out there. That's all right. Let's let, or maybe he's making a bad phone call. Uh, can we move on? But you guys got 150 back in. This is not a vote day. This, uh, But at the same point, it's a position day. That 150 was something that, okay, so, but, but, and I think there was some misunderstanding. And this is important. I don't get involved in the judicial side and how they do things. And we've had this conversation before. We should not use our influence towards the judicial no more than judicial writing letters to influence how we allocate budgets. Right? All right, there's a thin line. So my point is like, okay, however y'all need to do y'all job over there, that's fine. But if we've agreed to allocate a certain amount, if we've agreed to housing, we've agreed to housing, but we should not let the administration um, some kind of way stir stuff when I heard like, well, we, we assume because we didn't hear. Well, I picked up the phone and called. And so they both were appreciative. Both judges were appreciating for the continuing um, effect of housing here, uh, provision of housing by the board of commissioners um, for them to deal with this accountability court. It's not just enough to say we pat ourselves on the back and, you know, it's like, no, guys, we had to put up funding. We asked each other, like, y'all really want to do this. So this can't be just dismissed just to make the budget work administratively. That's my only point. You can't change it like that. It can't be changed. Now, I get what y'all did, but you can't change the will of the board to provide housing for mental health and for um, um, for drug and DUI. So I got to keep moving, um, Director Hallman, duly noted. Keep moving. 150 for both of those from my bucket. They need to be consistent. Please move on. Move on. Well, that wasn't our intent. There I was know. emails emails out from Tim. I wish he was here so that he could speak and and, and 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 show that there was conversation more than assumptions, but we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know you're, you're okay, Director Alvin. Do the note. Keep moving. Keep uh, the next item, uh, compensation forecast model retaining employees. Forecast? Say that one more time. You, yeah, I, it, Compensation, like a forecast model for retaining employees. Oh yeah, that that's probably just um, two things. Uh, we we have talent. Um, I guess there's a forecasting model, and I, I think it comes back to sort of the the probate judge. We 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 really we need to advance beyond volunteers. As I say uh, a, a volunteer mindset. Uh, there needs to be a more advanced, right? This more advanced education. We, we talk about our children to come out of school and get beyond high school and move on to higher education, right? So with that higher, uh, it, it's more value with that. It, it's about pricing of assets. It's about our intellectual capital. Our human capital needs to be priced right. So, okay, so what should that pour out? I mean, let, let's forecast how, how this is going to play out over time. One, we're going to lose some intellectual property, but at the same point, uh, as, as these people retire out, but at the same point, that, 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 that it's a market demand. We got to pay these people. Well, let's forecast what that needs to be, and that goes into the model with the fiscal policy, which is how to forecast. Quick kick in the can. Have the capacity to be able to like, okay, this is going to cost me to replace this person, but the cost is the cost. Well, let's forecast that. Let's play this out. Let's price these people accordingly. As I've always said, pay the people. Like, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear one more conversation about the legislative aid. All right? If you got a problem with it, then historically, you should have been paying your people versus treating them like batteries. Don't get convenient because uh, you have a new functions to keep up with this. Like, I mean, think about our teachers. Well, I get it. They got capacity, 25 students, 45 students. Well, I got 35,000, 40,000 people. I got to keep up 100,000 adults, and I'm committed to getting out there. I can't do it in a one-off and a part-time. So now there's a full part-time. It's two part-times equal one full-time. And really get out there and, and support the citizens. But again, I can't dictate to my neighbors how they run their office no more they can dictate to me. 
And this is how we're going to run it now. Now, how I got ran for 150 years is not my issue. But I'm very clear on what's needed to engage the citizens like uh, uh, Mr. Orr that came. Thank you, Mr. Curry that came, president of, of Brookmont uh, that came and, and spoke. And like, no, I hear you. They got a different need. Like, can we get some speed humps? Can, 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 can we get a fire station out here on Warren Drive? Can, 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 can you get some better restaurants? Now, that's going to take rooftops, Mr. Curry, but, but duly noted. Like, there's different needs in this community. And I want to be careful that we're not just arguing. And I don't debate directly with citizens. It's like somebody wants this, somebody wants that. I'm like, I'm the official. I get to say if it either is in or out. Nobody can make me engage them and debate them necessarily. It's like, well, I debate amongst my peers, but not with citizens. All right, let me keep going. So you got the forecasting tool. Pay the people for what they're worth. Um, I, I duly noted on the probate, I think there should be um, additional consideration on that. I mean, again, I don't like two thirds or three fifths vote type of thing. And it's like, okay, but that's just me. Uh, it is a majority. Keep moving, Director Hallman. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. Community Service Board dash public health. That may be a little bit of what you've already spoke about. Yeah, that's going to get into sort of the whole um, COVID money, fiscal policy. Yes. Uh, I'm going to okay. yield to you. Madam Carson is going to address that at some point. She's going to grab the mic. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just recognizing that, that public health and um, CSB are two separate functions, but yet part of the same family in essence. Um, and I know that both of them are going to be coming before us next meeting um, uh, as part of a bigger resolution for our, 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 our um, whatever they call it, the, um, the COVID, I'm calling it COVID money. Um, but, but anyway, from Congress, but she's going to work that out. So keep going. As a matter of fact, just say, um, put D3 on there. She's got this for me to take it off my grid. She's got this. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, giving the Douglas County Travel and Tourism the full 100% of TCT hotel motel tax fund while giving the Chamber of Commerce zero. Okay. Again, one more time, I'm going to yield to, to Madam Carthens taking that up. That was something that I just took because those were part of the agency presentations on that Friday. Uh, and I, I, I think. Um, uh, I just took it upon myself to sort of grab those things, which I thought were, it wasn't asked. We have to reconcile whether we're going to say yes or no. I think Madam Carthen is working on that. I'm not trying to say she has to speak today, but we're going to move that to her tab as well. D3, please. Move it on. Keep moving. New probate judge with uh, operations. Yeah, I mean, we've addressed that. Um, uh, again, uh, it's sort of like with the coroner. No, we ain't got to do it that way. No, the coroner ain't got to go pick up a 300-pound um, um, body that's died. No, she ain't got to do it that way. If you chose to do that when y'all were on guard, great. You got to do it that way. And I, 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 I challenge my commissioner, like, no, guys, we don't have to maintain the past. Change this thing, man. You got people doing like, well, why can't a woman be a coroner? Why does she have to be a big, husky, 250-pound, six-fold person that, 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 that can, like, no. They ain't got no strength test. There's no strength test. Do it our way, right? And, and so likewise with the probate, you got expanded responsibility. Like, oh, we discounting it now. Like, okay, are y'all kidding me? This lady is more than qualified. Should be priced the way she should be priced. We try to say, well, he he had that. Well, like, that, that was 30, 40 years ago. That is the cost of living that you only made it up to that amount over time. Oh, y'all got to be kidding me. Don't, don't, don't do injustice that way. Don't, don't. Don't do that. Don't forget what, what, what you're here for. All right, got to keep going. But we already addressed that. That'll come back later. Everybody's going to weigh in. Keep moving. That's offline. Keep it moving. The last two, um, and I believe Tim may be on the line now, but we've pretty much addressed, unless, you know, you, you won't ask Tim, the housing for the Hope Court and housing for Veterans Court. That's right. All right. Well, Tim, you out there? Let's talk about the veterans. And, and again, I don't, well, Madam Chair, let me be sensitive. If that's later on in the agenda uh, as part of one of the business items, um, or uh, I, I think I can wait as to not, you know, um, disrupt your order. Uh, but these are things that were captured as part of the budget. And so let me just get clarity. But if it's something that's going to be addressed formally by the Board of Commissioners, either consent agenda later or something else, then I'll defer. So, Tim, can you come in and weigh in on, are you still out there, Tim? Are you, have you arrived? Tim Pruitt, Director Pruitt. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, Tim Pruitt is not on the line. All right, Jennifer, so then we're going to just defer that, recognizing uh, we now have a DUI, drug, mental, and now a veterans court. 
Uh, and I guess my question was, is there a need for housing for veterans that's separate from the VA over in Carroll or somewhere else? What is going to be the approach? Who's now going to be responsible for that veterans court? Now, I know there was court occurring and co all that. Uh, we were just looking for some insight and to say, well, if I got a planet, tell me what you're thinking. You are the subject matter expert. My job is appropriation. It's allocation. My job is to provide for those judges, all judges equally, including the new probate. It's equal. You got a new need. So wait a minute. You got her with expanded court, but you got somebody who brought on two new courts and we're funding them. Uh-huh. I see. So I, I, I don't think Tim Pruitt needs to come on for this. Uh, my point is fully made. And um, again, this is a budget hearing. This is what you guys pay me $22,000 roughly to do every year. This moment right here. <laughs> so I get to have two, 20 minutes for this moment right here because that is my job. The sole responsibility is to set the budget. Okay, Madam Chair, I think I'm good. That's good enough, Director Hallman. Uh, I, I, I weighed in, I took my position. Um, however, you have the tabs, just keep it moving. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. And I believe the next tab is Commissioner Carthen Jennifer. So if you could roll it down and allow her to uh, chime in or weigh in. Um, Jennifer. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Carthen, um, the items we have for you or the notes we took was doesn't want to use fund balance for budget improvement request. That's correct. Um, I asked that uh, I see in the budget, we do have um, a little over our fund balance policy. And so looking at what uh, Commissioner Robinson proposed as far as the physical policy that uh, we may be implementing uh, in it, it states that we should be working towards getting up to 15% of our um, rainy day fund, which is our fund balance. So I am in opposition of using any of that fund balance to, um, to balance the budget one. And I think you've done a great job of that this year. You did not use it. So kudos to you and your team. And then two, um, the budget improvement request um, once we get additional funds in, then I think we should revisit those um, and make sure that we have those BRRs um, in prioritization. What is the priority? Um, what department? I think I made it clear that the first um, one should be the tax commissioner software since it is antiquated and um, that's how we collect our taxes. So we need to make sure that he has what he needs in order to get in um, what the, um, the county needs in order to pay his bills. Um, the second one was want to build our playground equipment. Yes. So I know we were going to look into that to see if it could be paid out of SPLOTS funds. Um, I really would like for us to look at where we could allocate that within the budget. One, because it is, uh, it's an ongoing thing. That playground equipment is, is truly old and derelict roof. Um, needs to be replaced ASAP. And so while we um, we know that the funds may be in there, I was on the Park and Rec's uh, meeting this morning, and it looks like we may have some savings in order to do that. That will be coming back to the, uh, the Board of Commissioners um, per the presentation that Director Gary Dukes made to us this morning, Jennifer. So um, Please get with Director Teal and Director Dukes. It looks like we may have um, a good savings there, and I would like to see if we get apply that savings towards the playground equipment and the Deerlick roof replacement. Okay. Okay, and the hotel motel tax allocation. So with that, we had a request um, from our Douglas County Travel and Tourism and they requested that we give 100% of the TCT fund to them since they are our designated um, 501, 50C6 for the county. They are a destination marketing organization. And I am in favor of giving 100% of the TCT fund to that one organization. And then they can work out with the chamber and the other um, groups um, what they need in order to ensure that um, our travel and tourism um, is working on our behalf in the county and that those funds um, from the hotel motel tax is going back into the community and getting people to come here for our purposes. So um, I'm in favor of giving them the full ask of the TCT funds. 
And Commissioner Cartha, may I ask, what yeah. about you and I kind of had a brief discussion on the TPD um, portion. Are you just right now you're just saying that just the TCT at this at this point or any portion of the TPD as well? A portion of the TPD, I think, was also in their ask. I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Um, they made a very good presentation, including um, asking that uh, they hire their own staff, which would mean we would take back our staff. We've been loaning them our staff, two of our staff staffers. So they would like for us to, they thank us for loaning them the staff, but they want to hire their own internal staff for the Douglas County Travel and Tourism. So those two people will now come back onto our payroll in, in our department. So, um, and they asked for TPD funds. So if we could give a portion of those funds as well, I don't have it in front of me, Jennifer, I'm sorry. That's okay, I've got the email and their first okay. question was, is the Board of Commissioners in favor of funding 100% of TCT and TPD to DCTT? Okay, I am in favor of doing 100% of the TCT funds and the TPD funds. Okay. And I think the last one, Commissioner Robinson actually um, mentioned was CSB and public health. I, I included public health in my resolution that was brought forth on yesterday that we uh, took some time to discuss. And CSB also did a presentation uh, the same way that DCTT did. And they requested certain things from us as a board of commissioners in order to allow them to start being self-sufficient, meaning that way they don't have to actually come before the board each year for funding. Um, and one of the things that they would like to uh, propose, and I believe um, Director Lightfoot is coming forth in a few weeks, um, but they would like to propose that they become the designated um, board in regards to all mental health. And so, um, and funding for the COVID-19 to kind of carry them through um, is also being proposed in my resolution. So um, those will be brought forth as well as public health because they have another presentation. So the CSB and public health will be addressed um, for the COVID-19 funding. And then also CSB will be addressed in regards to how they can um, become self-sufficient um, with their new proposal. So that should take care of them. And that was, I believe that was all of my tab, Jennifer. Okay, uh, right. Commissioner. Commissioner Guider, um, the tabs we had for you are uh, doesn't want uh, furloughs included. Oh, okay. Um, yes, uh, furloughs for the uh, public safety are not included. Are, are any furloughs included in this budget? Uh, at this point, no, there is no furloughs in this budget. That's what do you mean at this point? Um, I'm sorry. What do you mean at this point? Well, the budget that was the, the budget that has been presented to you today, knowing that it's not the final budget, because y'all will not finally make the adoption until the next meeting. The budget that the way it stands today as proposed does not include any furloughs. Okay, because when, when, the other day when we were talking about CARES money and everything, uh, something was brought out about some furloughs for public safety. So I wanna just make sure it's, they're not included in this. Yeah, I'm not aware of, of that. Um, the BRRs for, um, uh, we put a hold on all of them for everybody. Is that true? And they will be um, readdressed, I guess, sometime in March when we actually close the books on 2020. Yes, ma'am. Okay, on that topic, have you uh, done any kind of extension or trend where we might stand with the 2020 
budget when we close it out. Yes, um, I our, looked our at expenditures are, are what eight point something uh, right. percent lower than what we anticipated. So right. go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're fine. You're fine. Um, yes, ma'am. You know we we have um, looked at the revenues, and um, I think we're going to be um, on the mark uh, to what we estimate um, our expenditures. Um, what I did is I looked at the trend for the past five to six years, and we range anywhere from being two and a half percent under budget all the way up at one year. I think we were at nine or ten percent under budget. Um, so based upon that, I know that was a large a large swing going from one way to the next. Um, and so what I did is I said, okay, on average, we're going to be about three percent under budget. I do suspect that that is going to be higher, uh, but the last thing that we wanted to do is inflate our ending estimated fund balance um, and then not meet that mark and y'all not have, you know, the, the funding um, to do maybe some of these revisited budget improvement requests. So I think I feel comfortable where we're going to be on my presentation. I believe I said that we would begin begin 2021 with an unassigned fund balance of just under 12 million. Um, and I think that's probably on the more conservative side. Um, just right now, we just got to, you know, keep our pulse on the keep our finger on the pulse on our tax collections um whether that be property taxes or local option sales tax but both of those seem to be coming in as projected um or more um but you know we budgeted 93 percent for property tax collections because we were not sure what the uh, pandemic what impact that would have we normally get from our books because of the way our fiscal year ends we normally get you know around 95 yeah, 95 to 96% collection. So if we get that, end up getting that 95, 96% collection, then, you know, that's just more money that goes into fund balance. And that would be reported to you middle, mid to late March when we officially close out the books. And then y'all can look at where the fund balance actually is in 2020 um, and how much of that, if you want to use um for any improvements budget wise okay if, if you take the three percent uh what would that extend out to be in in dollars um you're looking about three million i believe maybe a little bit less because our budget's around a hundred million so I, I don't have that exact figure in front of me, but I can get it for you. But you're looking, you're looking at around, you know, two and a half to three million. And you, you say that's a conservative figure. Did yes, ma'am. Based upon what we're trending right now, um, okay. you know, as y'all all know, we have been seeing a decline in our expenditures, just our weekly expenditures and. Uh, for accounts payable um, just due to limited operations. So um, I suspect, you know, that that to be a, a good solid number, um, but I, it's just too much right now to sit there and say, well, it's going to, it's going to be 5%. It's going to be 8%. I just, I don't, I don't want to make that kind of statement. It's too early. Okay. Well, uh, we don't have the November, um, uh financial report yet uh, and i was just looking at the october and it mm -hmm. looks like we may be higher than the three percent but that's just just me um now in the revenue assumptions you have no new growth at all in there um now we've been anticipating a large uh company coming online in 2021 mm -hmm. uh why would you put no growth on it? Because of, because of the directive that um, was made um, when the millage rate was adopted, that we would present y'all a budget 
that revenues for the upcoming year, so it would be the revenues for fiscal year 21, would not exceed what we anticipate on receiving for 2020. So in doing so, we could not, um, you, you're pretty much limiting your property tax to be pretty flat. Uh, yes, there has been and will be new growth um, and hopefully maybe some substantial new growth, but it's one of those things of just being more disciplined and not counting it before we actually receive it. And then maybe in the 2022 budget is when we can capture that additional growth instead of trying to capture it in the year that we think it might happen. The it, this allows us to be a little bit more disciplined and and capture it after it happens and incorporate it into the subsequent budget. Okay, because uh, I understand this is going to be a pretty large company. Uh, the assessments. Uh, should greatly increase um, revenues, but uh, you're. But we also do not know what businesses will never open again. Too. Right. So I guess, um, a lot of our small businesses probably will not make it. Um, now going back to my list. Um, now the BIRs um, for March, they're going to before you transfer the money, because you're estimating figures here, right? Yes. For the BIR. So you're not just going to transfer that over into uh, a department's account until the bids have been put out. Is that true? It would be up to your y'all's discretion. Um, when y'all revisit, it would have to be a board amending the budget. Um, in March or you know mid to late March to amend the budget to include anything that you or y'all feel that needs to be done this year um, and then at that time is when the budget would be amended. Well since project. we don't know what a large item may come in uh, as a bid whether it comes in under bid could we put if we transfer any of these monies into any Department, it ought to be into our uh, general appropriations or the 190 until we actually have a, a solid figure is what I'm saying. Okay, we'll make that note down, take that note down. Um, and then the next item is uh, I wanted uh, playground equipment um, at uh, Winston and I'm talking about the upper field. The upper field, uh, please note that because there is playground equipment down at the lower field and at Post Road. And I don't know, um, I can't remember last time I visited out there whether or not there was any playground equipment there at all. Uh, I think we're, put, we put, we're putting new playground equipment at uh, Fair Play, I believe. Um, don't know if Gary is on, online, but um, just go ahead and put fair play on, on there as a precaution. Pardon? I'm here, uh, Commissioner Goddard. Yes. Do we have uh, good playground equipment at fair play now? No, ma'am. Actually, that it was a the post road was a misprint. We have a very nice set of playground equipment at Post Road. Okay. That was uh, that was supposed to be Fair Play Road Park. Okay. Uh, okay. Winston and Fair Play. Uh, I appreciate you telling me that because uh, I could not remember seeing any playground equipment at the Post Road, <laughs> but ev evidently there is, if you say so. So. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. down by the field. It's okay, Jennifer, just make that note that it should be fair play rather than post road. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I just said as a general, um, you know, edit that we ought to just have good playground equipment at all of our parks and everything. Um, I'm going to go offline a little bit. Um, because there's been some things said about me that were incorrect by the tax commissioner. And uh, he stated, I 
blamed him for the furloughs. I never did. I think people forget that these figures are out there online. We've talked about them before online and on camera. So um, a citizen does not have to go very far to find data. Um, I do not know Miss um, Backel or Bactel uh, that I know of. I do not talk to her. She sounds like a woman with her, her own head on her shoulders. So uh, I never blame the tax commissioner for furloughs. When the paper, and I always return phone calls. I don't care if it's the media or citizens or whatever. I always get back with them. I will answer questions that I have the liberty to answer if they ask me a question. I never said that the tax commissioner was to blame for furloughs. I did say his office, the error that they made, the $1.2 million error did cause the 8.25% uh, budget reduction in all the departments. That was also said at our last meeting. So uh, at the retreat and everything. So. Uh, he, see, he likes to blame me for something. I do not go on Facebook. Very often, if I've been on Facebook two times this year, I would be surprised. So uh, I wish he'd just leave me alone. I've got family issues I'm, I'm tending to. I don't care what he's doing as long as he's doing something legal. So uh, he needs to find another scapegoat. So with that, uh, I just wanted to clarify, he's he's putting uh, bad information out there. I read the article in the paper and I didn't see where I was quoted as even saying I blamed him for furloughs. So <laughs> he needs to go back and read the article too. But I will answer questions to the media because I don't think we should be hiding anything. The truth always uh, is the best uh, factor that we should put out to the public. And I will never stop putting the truth out there. So if I'm asked a question by the media, I will answer it. So with that, I yield. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, may I proceed with Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, I'm so okay. sorry. Yes, you may proceed. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, we have some items on the list. Um, uh, you would like the tax commissioner software. Right. Okay. So but let me let me start off the conversation with okay. this, Jennifer. And, and yes, and I'll, I'll get to that particular uh, Q&A right there. But let me say, first of all, say to my colleagues, I mean, this Q&A and this, this, this conversation has been very healthy and worthwhile. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear and glad to hear that we're really taking uh, a serious look at these numbers at the budget and the direction of which this county will go based on the numbers. And as my vice chairman Robinson would state, these are these are the numbers. This is this is a reality check. But I just want to say to these guys, this, I mean, truly, this is this is a, 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 a big ups to you guys and myself that we really kind of taking this thing to heart and a very serious look at what these numbers are and just from a, a a scale of the pandemic as stated this pandemic actually had a huge effect on our budget huge however as i stated before uh, this budget that this aggressive budget um it would it, it, I, I didn't see it making other than on paper and that's why I, I was not for the true aggressiveness of this particular budget. However, we did, and the pandemic only added to it and, and really had a huge impact on these numbers. Um, but here nor there, um, I, I'm not, you know, trying to uh, pull off the scab off any sores or anything. I'm just kind of just making it a known fact, though, that it was stated 
that this was an aggressive budget, not knowing that the pandemic would hit. So it, it only just truly affected royally because when you look at the rollbacks, uh, if you look at the expenses were continuously growing with the brick and mortar, we can only assume that the expenses were growing and the revenue was not was was aggressively uh, uh, being approached and wasn't there then you would definitely get yourself in this kind of a, a pickle and that is your revenue was definitely when the pandemic hit it started to decrease i mean by 30 40 50 percent but your expenses continued so the brick and mortar and the items that the community asked for we provided and providing the excellent services that we're providing that's what we got and that's that's what that's what ended up happening so and one kudos to Jennifer, before I get to this, answering that particular question to the tax commission, I just want to say to you publicly, thank you for expressing your true budget numbers, how these numbers came about and where they are and why they are where they are. And it's not a reflection of you overspending or underspending or any true effect to your budget was based on the mere fact of your operation moving from the courthouse to a separate building. Um, and, and I just think that's, that's, uh, that was great. And, and I, I, I agree that for those who don't understand it, I understand that they probably won't get it. But for those who would just take only a look at the Facebook side of things, because I know I've been in several meetings, uh, which all of us have various town hall meetings, and I'm just a little surprised for those who say they we don't. I'm just baffled by that. Uh, but I don't know kind of how you've missed the many town halls and various meetings that have transpired. I'm not sure why, but they do happen. And as Vice Chairman Robinson stated, we take heed to what those that put us here and ask of us. And there's never is there's not there's always going to have we're going to always have this problem, and that is one side agree and the other side disagree we have to make that final decision based on the good of the entire county and i know my colleagues we we always have these conversations as to why should we allow district one or two or three or four to do and or move forward versus looking at we have to look at the the, the big picture versus just the one that's just only in your district. So I, I, I kind of take a back seat for those uh, m of my colleagues who would say things like it's only happening in district one or two and they get everything in that in those two districts. I just say that's that's not true. But if I'm advocating for what I see in the future of my district, then what's wrong with that? I think that's only fair. So for those who I represent, I, I sincerely do that with uh, with sincerity. I want to make sure that they understand that it's about them, not about Commissioner Mitchell. So again, to Tax Commissioner, great job on that. And Jennifer, to you guys and staff, I'm glad to note that you guys listened to what we talked about earlier about making sure that we have what I call a flat budget. I understand that there's potentially several possible uh, new growth and, and businesses that are forthcoming online and all that good stuff, great. That'll be additional cash and or in the coffer that we'll have that we can put in our rainy day fund or wait and decide on how do we address some of the BIRs that we put a, a drastic hold on. And let me say something about the BIRs. Don't think because we said no BIRs and that's you know kind of what it's going to be until we'll revisit this in, in uh, March, I think it is. March? Somewhere in March, I think it is. The need is what we got to understand. How important are the needs? Not just what some of these guys want, but how important are the needs? So with that being said, Jennifer, I'll, I'll start off with my first Q&A about the, the software for the tax commissioners. I look at that as a need. It's important that we look at that as a need. That's one of our biggest income driver throughout the throughout the county. 
And if they can't op operate with the state and with the citizens of Douglas County to collect, uh, to deal with the, um, the assessors, uh, to deal with GIS, we got to make sure we take a hard look at that. And I understand the delay, and I can get that. And, and we can still work on where we are with that, with the tax commission. However, it only prolongs how fast or how soon will you get that collection and get, get that part of it done. So I get it, but do understand that's going to have a huge effect on where we go and how we move forward. Because if he can't collect in a timely manner, or we get uh, the wrong information from the assessors because they can't, you know, put in the tags or, or, or we got to do it by hand or manually now. We've moved in a different direction now, and we've got to be not technology challenged. We've got to get ahead of technology so that we're able to provide the services, the excellent services that we're providing here in Douglas County. And those types of moves, we've got to look at and take a strategic approach and assure that those that are affecting, especially your budget, because these numbers will affect your budget. We've got to make sure that they have what they need to get it right and not look at um, uh, where we got to give back some form of, uh, of a misassessment that we could have caught I mean, many moons ago, then to all of a sudden have to give back a million or so dollars because we did the wrong uh, assessed values. So that's the importance of what I keep saying. We got to look at the, not the want, but the need of the tax commissioner, the board of assessors, and uh, the GIS in that particular piece of software. On to the day porter. And Jennifer, I don't want me to get ahead of you, but I, I think I can handle this from here, okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay, all right, okay. On to the day porters. I, again, we talk about the first responders. We talk about, you know, those that are, are getting these types of dollars and, 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 and grants. Why would we fall short of our citizens and, and, and our employees? Because we want to pull out that type of uh, cleaning services to reassure their safety. That's a no, to me, that was a no brainer, but I see that earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, I think the 23 was put back in. Um, uh, yes. The cleaning, go yes. ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, it was, it's back okay. in. Right, so, so, so I, I, I understand we're trying to cut and cut and cut, and we got, I mean, very few dollars left. Like Commissioner Robinson always say, we only got a, a, a nickel that we're all trying to, to, to slice and dice up. It's not a lot that we have to deal with when it comes to the, the dollars and cents, but some things you, you, you just can't sidestep, especially when it comes to the safety of the citizens of Douglas County, and most of all, those in which serve the, the citizens of Douglas County, those employees. Uh, I guess last but not least, I guess, um, what I'm trying to see this is Jennifer, the the breakout of the senior citizens. And I think that, that particular question, that Q&A was about Jennifer and, and to, to those that are watching. This was about do uh, Ms. Gilcrest, how is she gonna structure uh, the senior citizen center? She's over them all, correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer and or Mark. She's over those um, senior citizen centers. However, we were asking, at least I was asking, kind of how is that structure gonna gonna look how is, what is her plans to kind of lay that out and that would be a more of a question and a, and a preference to uh, miss miss gilcrest as to kind of how that looks and then if we did do that then jennifer i think my other part to this was that it was a twofold that how would you have it broken out when it comes to accounting because you would have to account for it whether she do a, a lump sum of all three or or three different buckets that falls under senior citizen services, I guess. Help me with that, Jennifer. Yes, sir. Uh, right now, um, not including the new senior center, you know, right now there's a department for senior services, which is the, we'll call it the Fairburn Road, Meals on Wheels okay. mm -hmm. um, program. 
that's a separate department um, from the senior center, which is here on Woody Fight, the Woody mm -hmm. Fight Senior Center. Um, so the, they are two separate departments. Um, I am fine with, and I believe Sabrina mm -hmm. is is reaching out to Consuela to see if she prefers to have the senior center that's very similar to the, to the Woody Fight Center to be combined as one budget um, so that they can, you know, purchase things that are for both centers, you know, or does she want it to be a separate department where they have separate, you know, department number, mm -hmm. everything separated out. Um, we in finance do not have a preference. Um, it's primarily, you know, ultimately, of course, what y'all uh, would like. If y'all have a preference or and or if Consuela uh, being the director has a preference because we could set it up either way. And, and I would lean more toward Dr. Gilchrist, kind of what is her preference? How, how right. would she envision that to be and hopes that you guys would work accordingly based yep. on her preference? If she wanted each all three separate and you guys can work the numbers and work the math, not the math more so, but the, the line items and, and coding and all that good stuff, then, uh -huh. then make it work for her. Uh, yes. But, but however, whether she lump them in together, I, I don't have a preference because I, I look at numbers and it's easier for me to see one lump number, one lump sum number, than to break it out uh, that detailed. Mm -hmm. But if I had to look at it that way, that's fine too, though. So Right. Uh, I'll yeah, I, that, that's the way we feel. We're fine either way. And, and we'll um, kind of, like you said, see what Consuela's preference is um, and, you know, move forward in, in getting that set up in the system, however, however that shakes out. Right, right. Yeah. So, and so, Commissioner Mitchell, it's my understanding that senior services would need to be separate and it needs to stay separate like it is now because right. of uh, state reporting. Okay. But we'll confirm that with Consuela. As far as the other two, it doesn't matter. That's a doesn't matter one way or the other. Yeah, that's so, a good point, Mark. The the senior services, Fairburn Road, Meals on Wheels department would probably need to be its own department uh, because of the ARC reporting and and all that. That's a very good point. But the two, what I would call active senior centers, the the Woody Fight, and then this new one. Uh, based upon Consuela's, um, you know, preference, they could be combined as one uh, under the, you know, same department as the current one, or they could, you know, we could set up a whole new department and have it separated. And, and you got a valid point too, though, Mark and, and Jennifer, I, I, you're absolutely right on that in, in that vein. But but what about with the grants and, and all the other, you know, that they may apply for from the senior citizens uh, perspective, if, if separate, does it have more value to getting those grant dollars versus them being together? You know, um, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud and just, you know, I, I guess that will be a question for uh, Dr. Gilchrist and, and the team to, to see, is it best to separate them for those reasons, yet alone from the mere fact of ARC and everything else? Correct. Okay. But, but I, I'll leave that on, on in that vein. But, Again, you know, um, this has been a, a, a good lesson, and, and, and I'll say this too, though, in the conclusion of this, is that we're not done yet, guys, and I, and I hope we all understand this. So doing a flat budget like this, basing it off of, of, of this year's revenue and everything was a smart thing that we could have ever done. So to Commissioner Carson, thank you, because... That was the, probably the smartest thing we could have ever done, all because even if we get all the new growth, all the, the assessed values and the, the, the businesses coming online, what we got to also account for those businesses that we're going to lose as well. Because as I've said, everybody is not going to make it. There's what I always call when I was in the military, there's a, the casualty of war and we're going to have some casualties. Not of my liking, but we will have some casualties. And, 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 and doing it this way, it only sets us up for the future to have what I call these rainy day funds 
or a, a, a stronger fund balance by doing it this way. But I, I, I'm with you. I think we need to kind of steadfast. Um, I, I truly think too, though, Jennifer, and I think you guys are going to speak with, you know, I guess they'll talk about this. We've already, I think we mentioned that we're going to put in at least for the community center and the senior citizen center, roughly about uh, $500,000 with the combination of both, you know, to kind of a half of a year to kind of get started with those guys. Uh, not that they may be online yet or not, but we still need to account for that. Am I correct? Yes, sir. You're correct. Okay, so, um, but but do you understand? Oh, and, and I guess my only other piece that I want to add, what about the fire station, the new fire station? What were the numbers yet along how we're accounting for that one uh, budget item there? I'll defer to Mark on that regarding okay. the construction of the new fire station, when that's going to be coming on. Yes, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. So what we've discussed is working on the uh, the plans in year five as far as the design goes, and then bidding that out in uh, year six. So in 2021, uh, you should see uh, some work on the design on the uh, new fire station. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, but we've got design costs already baked in here, or not? No, sir. That's splashed. Oh, that's right. That's right. My apologies. You're right. Okay. So splash covers that. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. All righty. Um, and let me see here. But I'm looking at my notes to just make sure I didn't miss anything. But um, outside of that, I'll leave it on that note. And um, again, Jennifer, Mark, all you guys, staff, great job. And to the citizens of Douglas County, uh, I hope you're listening and I hope you're watching as uh all the commissioner states, whether they're in town hall meetings or just having conversations, follow the dollar. Follow the dollar and keep up. You'll understand that what we're doing is definitely not incorrect. It's just that those adjustments that's, that are being made now based on the pandemic, based on the mere fact of uh, uh, having a sound budget, sometimes require these types of steps. And we just got to respect them. and. I mean, the budget is just only an estimate of what we envision to look like financially when it comes to Douglas County. Well, if by chance a pandemic comes around, or better yet, a flood, well, then that comes a budget adjustment. And then that's what you got to make those adjustments for. So don't look at the negative side. Don't continue to just fight about what we're not doing. Just understand how great things are when you look at these numbers and look at this budget. I'll yield back. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. And then finally, Jennifer's myself, I could just first start off by saying discipline is not an option in a pandemic. And I'm certainly um, just kind of baffled a little bit about some of the just rhetoric that's been going on in the community regarding a pandemic. Uh, saying that this budget has certainly, that the county is in a bad position when we really are in better than most. We're doing better than most counties across this entire nation. So with that being said, I would like to say that the pandemic has played a significant part in restructuring all of our lives. And largely because of this Board of Commissioners, uh, we had to make some tough decisions in the midst of an unexpected pandemic. So I just would like to say that uh, we, you all have jumped in, and I'm so proud of what the Board of Commissioners have done to help shape uh, the future for Douglas County as it uh, pertains to our financial stability going forward. Uh, certainly, a pandemic is on the scale of a Great Depression, not a Great Recession, a Great Depression. We have not seen anything like this in 100 years, and for anyone to dismiss a pandemic, that that's, that's concerns me. Uh, a pandemic, it, again, is comparable to a Great Depression, and uh, we are certainly standing largely because of the support of Congress, who has uh, certainly provided some funding from the state, which was about $5.5 million to allow us to uh, sustain ourselves during this moment. And um, I just would like to say that I am just, um, I would like to thank the property owners for taking the step to 
uh, deal with us in our 27% uh, increase on property taxes. I'm a property tax owner as well. And we needed some, uh, some support and I appreciate the, all the things that the citizens have done to step up uh, during this moment. And this moment too shall pass. And those days of uh, the rollbacks that we've done in the past, which was about $9 million, I don't want our citizens to forget what was done prior to this pandemic because $9 million to roll back to property owners is nothing to sneeze at. And secondly, would like to thank um, our employees who have taken the step uh, for the furloughs, who have worked with us on these furloughs to understand that we had five days furloughs in this county, but uh, to be honest with you, across this, this entire nation, we have 35 million employees uh, or, or citizens unemployed and probably about 10.5 million are related to local government employees, which includes firefighters, policemen, teachers, um, and some of our entertainment uh, centers and uh, folks that's in that industry uh, and, and some other manufacturing industries are unemployed. Uh, five days furloughs, I know that was uh, quite significant and it, it generated a lot of press and discussion in our community. But most uh, uh, counties throughout the nation started with 20, 25 days furloughs. And I thought that was very uh, significant. But I, I appreciate the five days uh, employees and this too shall pass again. And we will resort, uh, resort back to the moments and days of raises and things that we've had in the past. But I always just want to keep in mind what my former drill instructor said many years ago. She said it always could be worse. And this, this has been a defining moment in my life to see human behavior in the midst of a catastrophic disaster. Some did what they were supposed to do, kneel on the, on the, on the ball and just wait until the storm passed. And others complain all the way in. But I won't cry. I'll just keep moving. So I'll look at the ones that uh, I, that I put on the list this time. Jennifer, and we didn't add it. I did say no furloughs. And that's what I'm saying. And again, uh, again I'm just, I don't want to go too fast because I don't know what this pandemic is going to do. So that is not on my list. But if you could just add it on there, furloughs, hoping that, the, that this virus will allow us to make it to the other side. Yes, also, I would like to see, um, I wanted a half a year for the funding for the senior center and the rec center. Uh, my colleagues brought to my attention that, you know, the citizens voted for this in 2016, these two particular uh, projects. And I wanted to make sure at least, I just don't know when the vaccine is coming available, but we will uh, at least be in position to provide services for at least a half of a year going next year. Day port is very important because I'm health driven. We need a day court in that tax commissioner's office because of the uh, coronavirus is still evident and present. And we need to keep this virus virus at bay. And I appreciate what our day port is doing over there now to keep the virus down, to keep the spread, the community spread uh, at bay here in Douglas County. Also, I, you, you have on here wanted uh, playground equipment for fair play. And also uh, Bill Arp was the two that I had. So if you could just add Bill Arp. Uh, I had Bill Arp and Fair Play, District 3 and 4. And then want to see if we could use uh, SPLOS for the uh, playground equipment and roof. But uh, uh, Commissioner Carthen mentioned earlier that I guess it was some additional funding in the um, Parks and Recreation. I guess they found some funding within their budget that may take care of those two items. And then again, I appreciate the Board of Commissioners uh, listening and, and allowing the recommendation of the BRRs and uh, the budget improvement request to be revisited in March, as we have done in subsequent years when I did take office. So with that being said, um, that's about where I am now, but I just want us to, to realize that this pandemic is still ever present. Um, we plan it day by day, minute by minute, minute moment by moment. So, uh, Again, it's still early, but 2021 will be a year similar to 2020. We will double down on our expenses. We will monitor our revenues and we will make every decision will be one that will be calculated. And we will not, we, we just, it's going to have to double down on our, on our purse. There's nothing wrong with tightening expenses. It's a time and, and a place to be conservative. And right now is a time for us to be conservative in Douglas County. So with that being, 
Commissioner Mitchell, I believe your mic needs to be placed on. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. I believe this is the uh, end of our budget presentation, unless there's some more comments. But again, I just wanted to wrap up by saying that this too shall pass, citizens. And just uh, I appreciate what the Board of Commissioners have presented today. This is a very good budget. Thank you. All right. All right. If, if, if I may, Board of Commissioners, can I move on to our new business, business items? We have new business, uh, tab Madam, number seven. Uh, Madam Chair? Uh-huh. Vice Chairman Robinson, I'm yeah, sorry. Just, just one, real quick, I was trying to catch Director Hallman. So for, for the, the record, we talked about this this morning. What is the next step for the public and for um, the commissioners? Um, we, um, as far as comments are concerned or any, if they have any, it's not saying that they have to, but what is the schedule going into the adoption? This is the time we need to put it a record. Sure. Uh, yes, as you stated, we will be having our finance committee meeting on um, this Thursday, December 3rd at 2 o'clock. And we will take the comments that we just went over, plus any additional notes to those comments uh, with us to the finance committee um, and discuss those uh, there. Um, and then um, in the meantime, um, or after we meet at the finance committee, anything that gets discussed or summarized regarding the budget with that, we will send out to all the uh, commissioners. So everybody um, knows where we're at with the budget. Um, then what we, uh, in that email as well, we'll uh, mention that if you have any other comments, uh, please submit them by next Wednesday, December 9th so that we can uh, gather all of those together and um, uh, review those before the adoption, which is December 15th. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to clarify that, not take you off, but just, just so that we're all on the same page. It says, okay, um, this is what happens next. And so you got one more bite at this apple, but coming to our next official meeting, that's it. And, and so th that'll be it. I yield, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Again, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for your amazing body of work with this project, or should I say our budget. Again, this is very pleasing to my ears and also to, I know, all the citizens' ears that we are definitely diligent of uh, going forward, uh, number one. And we, we've always been diligent, but right now we're in the midst of a storm, so we want to change our behavior to adapt to the moment of this storm, and that means the behaviors we just... Just keep doubling down on those expenses. And I appreciate what all of y'all are doing to support us, uh, to support. With that being said, I'm going to move on to the new business items. Tab number seven, reappointment of Beth Johnson, Lisa Cooper, and William Michael Brantley to the Tourism and History Commission, effective December 31st, 2020. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion for this reappointment? So move, Madam Chair. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please just respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? District yes. Three. Okay, Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Clerk, you, you, did you get that? Did you get everything? Lisa? Yes, ma'am, I got it. Okay. okay, I move to tab number eight, appointment of Terrace Eady to the Douglas County Travel and Tourism Board effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion for this uh, uh, appointment? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're still on the new business. We're gonna move to tab number nine, authorization to file condemnation petitions to acquire the right of way, the required right of way, and easements on parcel number 00250150009 located at Zero Stewart Mill Road in connection with the Stewart Mill Road and Reynolds Roads Intersection Improvement Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to authorize uh, the filing of this condemnation? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, this leads us into our next topic is the consent agenda. And I will read accordingly. Please keep in mind that all items are subject to final legal review. Tab number 10, authorization to amend the budget to accept the Family Connection Partnership grant for Douglas Core in the amount of $5,000 increase and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to approve the contract for the Roadside Enhancement and Beautification Council grant. REBC in the amount of $50,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 12, authorization to accept a law enforce enforcement grant in the amount of $27,757 with a $3,084 match coming from the director's salary for the state court DUI drug court for the period of January 1, 21 through January, um, June 1st, 21 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab num number 13, authorization to purchase 10 picnic tables and eight trash receptacles for installation at various county parks to be funded through for remaining 2019 SPLOST equipment funds at a total cost of $13,913.88 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization to enter into an agreement with Optum Healthcare Solutions, LLC, to provide eligible members with predetermined monthly membership rates to participating networks, Woody Fife and Lithia Springs Senior Center, when they enroll, enroll in the fitness passport program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, authorization for the chairman to execute a grant-funded employment agreement with a Adida uh, Saunders as the Veterans Court Assistant Director of Superior Felony Drug Court. Tab number 16, authorization to approve a contract with Triscapes Incorporation in the amount of $1,319,559.65 for the construction of the Landscape Development Services Project at the I-20 interchanges at Liberty Road, Post Road, Lee Road, and Thornton Road with funding to be allocated from the county's tree bank fund and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to approve 2021 LMIG application with the associated SPLOST and LMIG road surfacing list to be submitted to GDOT and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to approve change order number three in the amount of $61,380.55 on the contract with the Corporate Group LLC for construction of the Whitestone Culvert, Culvert Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 19, authorization to approve supplemental agreement number two in the amount of $7,900 and reallocate remaining traffic funds in the consulting services contract with Jacobs to finalize the design of the Stewart Mill and Reynolds Intersection Improvement Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And finally, tab number 20, authorization to approve a change order number three in the amount of $5,993.50 on the contract with Summit Construction and Development LLC for construction of the Doris Baker's Bridge High Point Sweetwater Church Road Intersection Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I believe the first, the second was from, I heard Commissioner Robinson first, but I thank you, Commissioner Guider. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular items, uh, topics, Board of Commissioners, before I proceed. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, just one, I, and this is, we're, we're rolling here. So, uh, Director Valentin, number, was it 17, LMIG? Mm -hmm. Director Valentin? 
Yes, Commissioner, I'm here. All right. Can you, uh, again, because this is the budget time, can you speak to the LMIG, what this program is, and also how this ties to the bigger SPLOS and how we're addressing transportation here in Douglas County? Certainly, I'd be happy to. Uh, the LMIG program is a grant program through the Georgia Department of Transportation. It's an allocation uh, that's done annually based on population and road miles. Um, this year, we're getting about one point one and a quarter million um, total, and um, there is a required 30% match for that uh, grant. In addition, uh, there is the uh, SPLOST allocation for resurfacing. Uh, this year, we have combined both lists together so that uh, the SPLOST can serve as the match for the LMIG program. And uh, between both of those, uh, we have about, uh, if memory serves me, a little over, I believe, 20, 21, 22 miles total. Uh, that would be done uh, between both um, the SPLOST and the LMIG. Uh, the application has to be submitted to GDOT before the end of the year. And uh, the, uh, the SPLOST program generally uh, addresses resurfacing and and uh, patching and milling maintenance items on collector and arterial roads. Uh, they're typically wider and longer. And therefore, as a result, we can do less mileage of those every year. Uh, the LMIG generally handles the subdivision streets, and there's about uh, 16 miles or so of uh, subdivision streets. Uh, the, the program, as it stands now, is a total of 34 roads with an estimated cost of a little under $4.3 million, which is the allocation between the uh, GDOT grant and the SPLOST allocation. So uh, certainly there were other roads in need of um, attention, uh, but uh, these are the ones that we were able to move at this time based on the funding allocation. Okay. Uh, and I thank you for that. And, I, and again, I, I just, and, and I appreciate the public's, I mean, everything is questionable. Absolutely. Every decision, everything we do as uh, the county commission is questionable. You're supposed to question your government, make sure you keep it honest. And I appreciate that. Um, uh, but then you, you, we look at now and put the propaganda to the side. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, that's what this great experiment was about, about democracy and how you want your tax dollars. You want a representation along with your taxation. There are no kings or queens or dictates. Got it. You sent us down here to represent your interests. Got it. We have meetings in which we collect feedback and we go to the bigger floor and we, 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 we put what we got and you got to get to three. You got to make that magic work, right? And, and it's, it's the majority. Whether you're electoral college or whether you're the popular, it's whatever it is, that's what it is. And I, I'm, I'm saying that because transportation is something that we know as a fundamental, um, and I know uh, Commissioner Guy has always said, you know, roads and revenue. That, that, that we used to be the commission of roads and revenue. Now that's before my time. Well, I wasn't even born at that time, but you go look at our, our, our local legislation, it, it's right there with um, pauper fields and chain gains and all that's in our history, right? Roads and revenues. Right, so the commission, we do the heavy lifting. Roads are expensive. We know some of you have been in your communities for 30 years since I've been here and never had your street paid in your community. Right, so Miguel, you're saying that what, the two, look at how we spend. And the question is your leaders must represent your interests and your values at the time that you're here. This county has shifted. In 1990, when I moved here as an adult, it was 71,000 people. The next census went to what, 98,000. Then it went to 124,000, then 142,000. Now it's going up to over 150. That means 75,000 people have moved into this county since my arrival in 1990. It has doubled in population. But yet we've kept the same people who've been in office for you know, 20, 30 years and the same infrastructure. And the same, like, but where's all that money going? That y'all can't pay my road. And you, you follow the money, follow, follow the trail of 
Who's in office? Who gets the jobs? But you got all those people that moved out here. Now, I get the people here in 1990 with 71,000 people. That was a certain base level. And, that, and so it got frozen, let's say, 50 million. Now, all these people that moved out here, and they're maintaining the 50 million for the people that were here. So the new people are paying for the people that have been here, just like you being bamboozled. You're being hoodwinked if your representation does not, if that's not reflective of you. Like, the, and so that's the whole point of advocating. That's the whole point. Like, well, I get the history, but I know, but as it relates to this district and where it's going, like, no, we're going to get our roads paved. So I'm bringing it full circle back to LMIG, which is as it relates to what you just stated. Um, how many um, miles is that per commission district, Miguel? Based on the 1.25 plus whatever that is, just what you're going to do by yourself within um, in-house. You said this yesterday. Just say it again. Yes, uh, between between the two programs is about 22 miles. Yep. Uh, and um, it, it breaks down in in terms of uh, funding, uh, 600,000 under the SPLOS, about 400,000 under the LMIG. When you combine them, uh, essentially a million dollars per commission district, a little more than that, but uh, not much more than a million dollars per commission district uh, for all of the resurfacing SPLOS and LMIG. And the only reason I say that, that look, you said what, 22 miles, right? Give or take. Yes, sir. Uh, that, that gets me up to, so that's per year. That's so five years gets me to 100. So and then how many center miles we got? 715. 715. So if it takes me five to get to 100, we got 715. Seven times five is, it would take me what, 35, 35 years? That is, that is correct, but in the 35 years, some of the ones that you do first would need attention as well. I understand. So, but we drive. You know, I'm on the same page. So, look at our priorities, Douglas County, especially District Two. It would take us 35 years just to make one pass. You've been a soldier your house, so from the time you built it, at that rate, you would never have your road resurfaced. Now. You can't do that out of your, obviously, it's hard to get there out of your checking account, but they have a funding mechanism that's called the SPLOS, and we thank goodness that you you allowed us and you blessed us, along with that senior center and that community center. Half of it is going to what we want to call, obviously, transportation, and it's very important. Um, roads resurfacing, um, and traffic lights, uh, intersection improvements, because all these people that moved out here, but we where was our priorities as leadership? It was somewhere else, but you spending a hundred million a year since I've been off. It's a billion dollars, and you ain't never had your road paved. Uh huh. And then, oh, y'all spending money. What are we spending our money at? I mean, it's, it's very thin margins. It's very thin. So, Miguel, I'm bringing it back full circle. Can you please, um, for my district, uh, you had a citizen come forth who says, "Look, can we at least get some speed bumps?" Can we can we look at that? So Miguel put that on my list as a condition of my vote. I want to look at all citizens, um, all communities within District Two that have asked for them over the past couple of years. What would that look like? And if I need to make some type of adjustment, because that's part of this. If you're doing it within the subdivision with LMIG, let's look at what that is. And I'm, as a condition, I may make an adjustment. But you got to put forth the list as is. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. You got that, Direct Director Valentine? I do. I do. All right. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. That's all I want to talk okay. about. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Carthen, I see you. You can turn your camera on. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, is um, Mr. Pruitt available to speak regarding uh, item number 15, the employment agreement for the Veterans Court Assistant Director? No one? No one to speak to that? He's there. I'm Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Uh, Mr. Pruitt, I have a question for you in regards to uh, the employment agreement. What is the term of the agreement as far as date? Date to commence and date to end? So I can speak to the funding. I, I will have to look back and bounce to legal to see what they actually put in. Uh, our funding for this position was on our fiscal grant year. 
So we didn't receive our Veterans Court grant award until July, and we didn't receive our budget for that until the very end of July, almost August. Uh, that's when we learned that we needed to begin the hiring process. And it's kind of taken us this long to get to this point of getting the approvals and going through interview process and uh, selecting a candidate. Um, so our funding goes through June 30th. Uh, I understand that legal uh, has this setting starting uh, on the beginning of December, and I, I don't have the exact date with me. I apologize for that. Okay. Um, but, but it would run for that year is my understanding. So it would run from December 1st through June 30th? Is that what we're... The funding is secured for that period, yes. I don't think that is what the fund, the contract actually says. I believe that the contract has it set for a short contract of November yeah. through December to finish this year and a renewal to set place in December that would run the normal 12-month period. Okay. So with that being stated, the contract isn't prorated for that month. So it the is contract. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. So my this is um, a reimbursement per hour. So mm -hmm. it would be for hours worked. Um, okay. And not uh, in other words, not a forty thousand dollar contract for a month's work. Okay. Because okay. that's what it looks like in the contract, so that's why I'm bringing this up. Right, I understand. right, right. And, and okay. I will absolutely reach out with Jennifer and make sure that we clarify any of that language because our goal and intent in my agreement with uh, Mr. Teal was that this was 100% grant funded. We would use no county funds for this position, and that has to match the funding source regardless of what the contract says. <laughs> So as long as you and I are on the same page, so if we could, if we could line that up, uh, I'm just a stickler about those things. It's, it's nothing right. on you, but once I read it, before I could, you know, go forth with, I did want it to bring it to your attention and to legal's attention. If we could just straighten that out. Um, and the other question I have for you, Mr. Pruitt, is when will Veterans Court uh, start? When, when will this begin? We're looking at first quarter of 2021, so a very short startup time. We're going to take many of the lessons that we've already learned and implement those from mental health court and drug court into veterans okay. court. So okay. it's a very short startup time. And we're going to start small and grow organically, uh, just like we did in drug court in 2015, just like we did in mental health court years later. We'll be following that same process because it has worked. Okay, so you're taking the lessons learned. You're starting small. This is a new court. Now that we're expanding, we need to learn some of the lessons and then move forward small incrementally so that we can make sure that we make the budget and not overextend ourselves. Is that what I'm hearing? We are always under budget in the accountability courts. Come we on, let's screw it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, taking care of that, and um, good luck going forward. Thank you. Thank you. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other contribution from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. We have a motion, Board of Commissioners, in a second uh, regarding our consent agenda. We have a motion in a second when I, when I call your district. Well, Commissioner Robinson, I see you lean in. Did you want, did you have something to say? No, just turn on the mic so I can weigh in. Oh, okay. When I call your district, please respond accordingly with your vote. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes, ma'am. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, before I uh, yield to the uh, Director of Communications with announcements, do you have any announcements regarding your various districts? Um, anything today? Okay. Yes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there, there was a communication uh, that went out, uh, and I just want to reemphasize um, that, and, and, and um, communications director may want to reinforce this, but there will be um, um, uh, disturbance on Maxim and Thornton Road uh, because of construction that's going on there. 
Uh, Miguel Valentin, can you clarify that? It's going to go through December 18th, if I'm not mid December, in essence, uh, right before the holiday, where they are doing work on that maximum. And it's a very important project for us, but there's going to be disturbance. And so I want the citizens to be aware that cuts through there, um, that you, there's going to be some rain. Um, lane um, um, closings and um, some 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 pain so and yes. excuse our construction go ahead Miguel please yes commissioner th that is correct uh, the the road will remain open at all times so it is passable but uh, there would be some lane closures uh, as construction is underway and uh, so if you can avoid the area if the citizens can avoid the area uh, they would avoid the delay it is not expected to be lengthy delays, but uh, nonetheless, uh, if there is a a uh, comparable route you can take, uh, then that would be uh, probably the thing to do for the next 15 days or so. Thank you. So that that just, uh, I know there's a notice that went out, but I just want to make sure I hit all um, uh, median forms, Madam Chair, and wish to share that. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about, because I'm sure they're going to talk about the comprehensive um, 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 transportation plan summit here um, in the meeting, um, in the announcements. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Madam Any Chair, can I address something? Uh, this is Ken. Uh-huh, yes. Yeah, this was uh, mentioned. I'm sorry, I couldn't get on. I don't know what the deal was, but I was trying to pull this up. I want to make sure it's clear on this short-term employment agreement that Commissioner Carthen had issues. I, I had the same issue, but I, I want to point out that this particular one is simply tied to the end of the month. And so the one that will be coming, uh, the next one that will be coming will be tied specifically to the grant information. I think what we got from Mr. Perry was just do it till the end of the month and then tie them in with all the annuals. And so I do agree with Commissioner Carth and this would not be the one that we'd want to carry into the next year, but because the term in here is only spelled out through the end of December. Uh, I think it's, let me make sure I got this right on here. I apologize. The, the provisions of termination is only good until December 31st of 2020, unless terminated earlier. The provisions for early termination really aren't applicable because it will be expired before the 60 day notice. So what we will do just to, clear, to make sure y'all are aware we will make sure that 60 day notice provision is not in this first one. The next one will be tied specifically to the grant. And when those grant funds ends, the contract can end without any advance uh, notice of any kind other than us, whatever notice we get as far as the uh, termination of the grant funding. I hope that clarifies Commissioner Carthen's question because I do agree it's an issue. The reason why I didn't raise it for this one because it's only good till the end of the month, but I'm gonna make sure the early termination notice dates are taken out, Commissioner Carth, and so there is no 60 day notice. The next one will be tied to the specific grant application uh, information that Tim's going to provide us that I don't think is in this one. Sounds good. That, Thank does you. Does that so make much sense? Yeah, it does. I apologize. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't get on while you were asking the question. Okay, thank you so much, Chairman Bernard, and thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Are you you finished? I'm, I'm assuming you are. Okay, no, um, no. and you had the floor, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. No, it's okay. But, but since it, it got introduced um, after the fact, I appreciate the 60 day notice comment with to, and, and to Commissioner Carthen. I would agree, and um, you know, uh, we'll move forward accordingly. Duly noted. Uh, I just want to acknowledge it. All right, so back to what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> Um, um, D um, Director um, Valentin, um, uh, can you speak to, or is it on the agenda to speak to uh, the comprehensive transportation plan um, um, input? Can you just speak to it and bring it more clarity? I, I may, maybe on the announcement. Can you speak to that? That we're about I to have certainly to can, Commissioner. Please. It is it is on the announcement, uh, but but I'll give you some context. Uh, the comprehensive uh, transportation plan is a holistic uh, review of the county's needs uh, from the transportation side, whether they be related to vehicles, uh, trucking movement uh, of goods, uh, bicycle, uh, pedestrian movement, sidewalks and the like, uh, and transit, uh, the buses and, and uh, paratransit services. So it, it is a 
a review of the existing conditions in the county, as well as a look ahead what the needs might be uh, 30 years into the future uh, to map a, a course or, or a, a plan to address the needs that are identified. Uh, so this, this uh, process usually will take about a year. We anticipate it will go through most of 2021. And so we, we certainly want the citizens to participate, uh, uh, provide input. Obviously, they are familiar with uh, issues that they have um, run into, identified in their travels, so that we can have a comprehensive look at what the needs are and uh, plan to how to address them and how to fund the needs that are identified. So to, to that end, there's going to be a, a public meeting uh, for uh, to give the citizens uh, an update on where we are in that process, as well as give them the opportunity to chime in um, as to needs that they have identified or priorities that they see. Uh, so we do encourage uh, every, every citizen, uh, business owners, um, uh, to participate, and uh, once we're done with the entire process, we will have a a, a plan uh, going forward, uh, long range and short range of projects that we can uh, implement, as well as potential funding sources, so that uh, uh, we can address the needs of the county. Thank you for that. And so really quickly, I know each of my um, fellow peers um, appointed somebody out of their district to represent them on this. Distinguish the difference between their participation in, as our appointees versus the at-large public input process and how do they meld together? Because I think that's important. Um, we know sometimes we hear people feel as though they're, they're not represented or that there's no... Speak to that, please. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, the the, uh, the There are representatives from each district uh, that serve on a stakeholders committee. Uh, the committee meets uh, more uh, regularly um, and addresses uh, specifics of the needs that are identified, but they, as well as the public, identify what the needs are. They, as well as the general public, can have input into what the priorities are, at least what is recommended as part of the master plan. So the, the district representative, uh, the, the intent there is that they know are, and they are familiar with the district, the needs of that district, uh, more so than perhaps some of the others. And if having a representative from each district, then we capture the needs of one di of each of the districts that may be different from the others. So the, the goal, again, is to address the needs of the entire county, all the different modes, uh, but specifically each commission district representative can speak to the needs of that particular district. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thank you for that. And last thing, really quickly, I'm sure, because I think it's still relevant and timeless. Where do we stand on our election since we're out of the general business? I mean, where do we stand with our election? Are we done counting, Madam Chair? Do you know? Anybody can give it an update? Yeah, I believe Wednesday is our deadline. Uh, County Administrator, can you chime in? I'm not sure if Milton is here, but they're still counting for the third time. Yes. But Wednesday, this coming Wednesday is the deadline. So they are still working. So those counts are, are continuing at this time. Okay. That's all I need yes. to Madam Chair, I don't have any other updates from Milton, but I think that's correct. Yes. Okay. I got it. I yield. Thank you. Okay. Um, communications Director, are you ready to? Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, I see yours moving. Are you? Okay. Communications Director? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, just to follow up, um, just to follow to as uh, Mr. Vice Chair Robinson and Director Valentin had um, eloquently stated in regards to the um, comprehensive transportation plan, that meeting is this week. It's this week, Thursday, December 3rd, uh, for the public from 6 p.m. to 7.30. Uh, everyone's invited to register and attend. It's the first 
virtual public meeting uh, of its kind. And as Director Valentin stated, it's a uh, countywide, long range, multimodal transportation plan that's going to be discussed. Um, and it's the first one since 2009. Uh, anyone interested in registering can visit our website, celebratedouglascounty.com, and also visit uh, our social media, Facebook, Douglas County Happenings page, uh, where there's a link that will be provided and you can easily register uh, that way. Again, want to reiterate that the public meeting is virtual and everyone's invited to um, offer input about various projects throughout the county uh, for this long range uh, multimodal transportation plan. And as far as the um, election count, um, you are correct. Uh, Wednesday is the deadline. I spoke with um, elections and voter registration director Kidd in confirming that Wednesday and they're still counting. And that concludes the announcements, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Director Martin. Well, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this body, and certainly I want to just uh, chat with the citizens briefly, then we will pause for recess because we have a recess. And we have a, a planning and zoning meeting coming up at 6 p.m. today. Uh, but Board of uh, Citizens of Douglas County certainly want to remind you that uh, wanted to, if you just could be aware of the three W's, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, watch your social distancing, and wear a mask when in public, according to CDC. That's so important because our numbers are increasing. We are in the midst of a second surge, and it's going to take our discipline to allow us to really mitigate this virus as we wait on a vaccine. However, with the uh, holidays upon us, I ask that you take the time to smell the roses because the pandemic has been and is painful. For well, your stocking stuffer moments, just keep in mind that you live in a county that has $4.9 million in their economic development pipeline. That's unheard of. Uh, larger than SunTrust Park and Mercedes-Benz Stadium combined. I mean, that's uh, sometimes I think we forget what God has done for us as a county. We have no debt. We have an excellent credit position, and we have a very active, fulfilling SPLOST. 2016 SPLOST is really materializing a lot of projects. We got a new senior center coming, uh, certainly recreation center coming, parks, roads, everything is under construction. A lot of counties are not doing anything. They're at a stagnant during this moment. And we have the largest economic, single, um, single largest economic development project and investment in not Douglas County's history, but in Georgia's history. And most importantly, we have a 100% census count. That's unheard of. 10 years ago, you had 74%. So I believe uh, over the holidays, if you would, uh, citizens, we, we want to count our blessings, uh, lessen the complaining, and try to see what we can do to make it through the moment of this pandemic. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, this too shall pass. But again, it, we knew early at the start of this run that this was a marathon and not a sprint. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before us at this moment, we will go into recess until 6 p.m., for the, and then we will return at 6 p.m. today uh, for our joint planning and zoning and board of commissioners meeting. So we are now in recess. Thank you, board of commissioners.